<laughs> Dang. <laughs> uh, good evening, everybody. It's uh, Sunday. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Jerry, it's, it's 7 o'clock on Sunday. Welcome. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Um, <laughs> so, interesting week. Uh, we're going to kind of touch on, let's do recap my week. Honestly, my recap is like 15 seconds, maybe, but uh, you can kind of maybe recap yours as well. So, um, everybody, you know, I talked to everybody, <sighs> talked to everybody last week, um, or I kind of just mentioned that I was trying a new strategy. So, I was trying to get out of a lot of those individual positions and end up going to indexes, uh, indexes, ETFs. ETS is a better way to say it, I think. Um, and so that's what I've been doing. So there was a lot, not even a lot of work that I did last week at all. Uh, before we get to the people here in the comments uh, or in the chat, well, I'll just kind of run through. Like I said, it's like literally a, a quiet week for me, despite that monstrous down day that we had. Uh, what was that, Thursday? Was that Thursday, Jerry, that we had that? Yeah, I think so. It. it I don't know. Is it, that Wednesday or Thursday? I think it might have been Wednesday. No, it was Wednesday. It was Wednesday because I took a bunch of stuff off. Gotcha. Okay, so looking here, where the heck? Uh, so I literally only took one thing off last week, and that was the TQQQ that I had on. Um, it was I didn't even make a lot of money on it. I made money on it, but you know it was up, so I took profits in it. If I can find out where the <laughs> portfolio, okay. So the nice, so I made $33 on 23, 23%. And the only reason I took it off was um, it just wasn't, it just wasn't decaying quickly. And when you had that monstrous down day, you know, the, the position was kind of down a little bit. So I just freed up some of that position or freed up that, you know, buy-in power because you might have another one of those days, Wednesdays or Thursdays or whatever the hell that day was that was down big right and i didn't put anything on that day i came close <laughs> came real close to putting on a baba or buying a baba um, leap actually but didn't pull the trigger um but i did pull the trigger on a ccl two leaps on ccl january 2023 strikes so uh, let's see 2250 so didn't really set myself up for a PMCC on that, but uh, it is what it is. I, I feel like the stock is, if you look at where it was pre-pandemic, it's not even anywhere near there. And the pandemic is pretty much done with, over with. But as you know, you know, leisure stocks like that do take a while to come back, but I still think it's worth more than where it's at now. So why not just buy a two-year, it's not even really a two-year leap at this point, um, a, you know, 18-month leap on it. So that's what I did. So two of those cost me 1200 bucks, 1300 bucks, or something like that. Um, that is all that I put on. That's all that I took off. So to kind of recap, 24% um, buying power usage, $4,100 in short premium, $1,300 in long premium from the CCLs and sitting about 447 of unrealized 18 positions open 38 contracts total. So I still do have a couple of uh, individual positions on Palantir GDX. Thanks for that. Um, James <laughs> XOP. Let's see. That's not really. So beyond me, um, I still have a, MasterCard on, even though I could have took that off, but I just left it on. So, yeah, I don't know. Um, I don't know. We'll see how this works out. It's definitely simpler. It's definitely easier. But it also is kind of strange throwing like $800,000 worth of premium out there in like a single ticker, right? Like QQQ, for example. That's kind of scary for some reason, and I don't know why. So... That's just uh, that's something I either have to get over or until the fat lady sings, you know what I mean? So it's not really until something changes or adjusts or, you know, an eye opener or whatever you call it. I even like, uh, what, what's a good way to say it, Jerry? You know, get your ass handed to you. <laughs> yeah, pretty um, much. 
then I probably don't know the flaws of that strategy. Like I already know there's some flaws, right? I'm literally a single index or whatever, all freaking technology, which will probably sell out hard or whatever. But I don't know. We were talking last night, Matt and I and you, um, I think all good would already uh, have fallen asleep, but about possibly maybe protecting that with some six month, you know, puts or something like that. But those were kind of expensive. So I don't know. Um, anyways, that is the update for me. Uh, I don't know if I'll move back to single positions or not. I think if you're trying to get the most out of your portfolio about buying power wise and all that, maybe that's the way to go for you. It's definitely not super passive necessarily. Um, I don't know. It's just interesting to, uh, kind of talk about because you know me, I've, you know, individual, uh, dividend stocks, cover calls, got out of that, went to VYM, cover calls on that. That didn't work. All right, let me do this, you know? So I've been all over the place. I like to try different things. So, um, all right, give us an update on your, um, strategy and, uh, you know, how your week was and all that stuff. So, well, well actually, actually last week was pretty good, good um, um, for being, being a four, a four, uh, four day four week. week. Let me turn this down. I'm getting the echo here. There we go. Um, where did I end up? I ended up uh, clearing out almost a thousand dollars in profit, uh, but I did fat finger. If you follow my trades on Wednesdays, I fat fingered uh, a trade and and lost like a hundred and eighty bucks. So that affected it a little bit. So I'm down to you know now eight hundred twenty bucks for the week, which isn't bad, but um, it was also because of uh, that Wednesday drop we had. Um, I didn't know, you know, I, I'm not even, the thing is, I'm not even running very hot. I think I was running at about 30% at the time. But when I started seeing the market move, I was like, you know what? Let me take off some of these, some of these and, and just kind of settle down a little bit. So I took off a bunch of stuff for profit. And uh, you'll actually see that on my next Wednesday video update. Um, but I brought it down, brought my buying power down, and I sold a couple more things in the next two days. But I'm only sitting at about 24% buying power at the moment. Um, mm. Still have about 3,000 cooking, roughly. Um, I did get assigned some SoFi stock. I did take assignment on that. Uh, about 300 shares. I pre-sold. The 1850 call out to July 30th on Friday, so um, we're gonna wheel that position, or it probably not wheel the position. If it gets called away, I probably won't touch it again. To be honest with you, um, so so the week went well. I closed out about I want to say about 14, 15 positions, and I only opened about seven or eight. Um, nothing too scary but uh I, you know i'm all all in individual stocks i do do etfs as well um usually uh the tqqq the art k the iwm uh yeah. tan pbw are are kind of my art k xop is good. those are kind of my circle of etfs that i like to play but i'm with dave here and I don't like playing a lot of contracts on an individual ticker. So I get that because even when I put on two, I'm like, Ooh, I'm like two. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, you know, cause that's, you know, if you're playing with, you know, something that's, you know, I have a smaller account. So, you know, if you're playing with something that's a hundred, 150 bucks a share and you're putting on two contracts, yeah, you can roll it, obviously, but to think about assignment, it's like, oh crap, that's that's kind of a big big hit there. So, um, yeah, that was my week. So, uh, short week, ended up around eight fifty. Took off a bunch of stuff. Got, you know, still got almost three grand cooking. Only using twenty four percent buying power, and I'm ready to reload next week. Just looking at the chart here, it was Thursday that we had the drop. So <clears throat> I know you said Wednesday. I thought it was Wednesday or Thursday, but it kind of dawned on me that it was Thursday because I was busting uh, James's balls about it. But um, 
you know. It was before the meeting, the Fed meeting, I think. The meeting. The Fed, Fed meeting is always on a Wednesday. So it was definitely a Thursday that the market dropped because Friday was up. So, um, yeah. So just to, I didn't really talk about this, but I am eighteen hundred dollars up for the month still, even though I didn't really take a profit last week. So that mostly came in just the first week of of July. I'm still on track to make four grand this month, something like that. Um, probably still beating the market. So um, that's an interesting thing that you brought up, though. I know someone else to bring up in the comment too, but your um, the individual contracts or the too many contracts in the same ticker. Um, and I don't necessarily mean I'm only going to play one ticker. I think that QQQ is going to be the main ticker. But honestly, you know, if you're in QQQ and you're in Art K, there's some overlap there, right? So, you know, I mean, you got to definitely think about that. But, um, you know, IWM, same thing. <laughs> so. Yeah. Uh, That's like uh, I, I mentioned, just so people understand. I mentioned PBW and TAN; those have some overlap as well. Um, you know, you get into the ARCs, especially ARC ARC funds, the ARC ETFs. They pretty much all have overlap of each other, so got to be careful there. Yeah. Um, so I hope everybody had a good week. Uh, you know, that definitely that Thursday was scary. And the thing is, is I normally put stuff on, put at least something on that day. I did not. Right. And I think it's smart to put something on. But it's just like when you're trading stocks, right? You're scared to buy stocks. So you think it's going to drop more. Right. But I tell you what, every time I've dropped, every time I bought on a big dip, it's always been better than me waiting around for it to drop more it's just it's always worked out in my favor if i was day trading anyway it's always worked out in my favor that way instead of waiting for it to confirm that it's going up that's usually when it reverses to go back down but it looks like the market's made new highs um it just you know that candle that we had of course you know the candle here on on spy looks a lot different than it did on uh ib but let me see the cues cues are still actually not at 52 week highs but the spy is so looks like we're going higher this looks like i mean you got all those btfders out there and it just looks like we're going higher people overreact spike in the vix i mean it is what it is um there's really no reason for the market to go down right now you know i mean you can argue that all day long i guess because of this because of inflation because of um the fed cutting whatever you know raising interest rates they're gonna what else they're gonna do jerry cut the uh buybacks uh, not stock buybacks of treasuries or whatever right. tapering. tapering right so yeah hot lips talking about stupid stuff and all that but all know? right let's do some shout outs here um we got michael krueger in the house here we got jay let me see jerry Freddie. what's that freddie freddie krueger yeah we got jerry's wife here my best friend we got J john arnold hey what's going on we got james here um go ahead and take a look at <laughs> definitely log in to the discord on thursdays james in there schooling yeah. everybody <clears throat> running all types of freaking uh strategies and stuff like that um i you know i like what he's doing it's just too much work for me i think <laughs> i like the all the different strategies and you can make money in you know every which way right strategy or every which way the market goes right i mean all the different types of sectors um, asset classes or what do you, you name it right gdx that's why i i got in at the beginning it turns out it was just a it was a blue light special but um yeah i don't know i, th I just don't i think it's just too much work for me i'm not lazy don't get me wrong it's just i like simplicity i like kind of thoughtless you know, put something on. I don't even have to think about it. Type of situation, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, I hear you there. I'm uh, lazy. Rebecca, I'm gonna admit it. <clears throat> what's that? I said I hear you there. I'm lazy. I'll admit it. I want it <laughs> simplistic, simplistic, easy, and uh, you know, I, I do need to sit down and learn a little bit more. I think if sure. there's a trade-off. You won't make as much. 
probably, right? Um, and this has been a debate probably going on for nine months now, just, you know, maybe just a little bit less than gestation period. But I haven't talked to Randy about this. And, you know, I'm like, because it makes sense to do 30 cent, 30, 30% probably in the money with less contracts versus going 5% with way more contracts, you know, and it's like, that's debatable, right? I mean, if the market goes down, you're going to be hurting, but you have less contracts. So it's just, I don't know. That That's a, that's a tough one to answer, I think, right? The market's biased to the upside. So in general, uh, you should be okay most of the time, but when something goes, she hits the fan, it's going to, the blast radius is huge. So yeah. gonna basically shit all over the freaking room versus me, you know, the blast radius is just contained to one quarter of the room or something like that. I don't know how to say it, but um, so I've been trying to kind of split the difference there a little bit. 15% probably the money is ideally where I'd love to be or 5.15 Delta would be ideally where I'd like to be. I can make quite a bit of money, not as many contracts on than if I'm at 10, 0.10. So I, I think I need to mess around with those a little bit. Uh, so Rebecca, well, we're doing well. Are you at work tonight? She made money in uh, her first TQQQ, by the way. First ever nice. options trade. She took it off for, I think, for like a 70% profit or something like that. So congratulations to Rebecca. And uh, I'm so glad that she put on the trade that I told her to put on. <laughs> um, Chase, what's going on, buddy? Good to see you. MDB, what's going on? Welcome to have you, uh, Knight Rider. Uh, so what? I was thinking about trying a, to PMCC CCL. Um, Jerry, have you tried to do a PMCC in your Fidelity account? Um, it's not possible in a retirement account. I don't know if it's possible in my uh, taxable. Uh, never tried it, so um, I don't know. Let me just say this. All retirement accounts are not equal. Mm -hmm. They say that because my CRA account, which is a company retirement account, solar 401k, trust, Schwab will only give me level zero, which I think is equivalent to level one for fidelity. But if I do an IRA, they'll give me level, I think level three. It's two or three. It's one of those two. Okay, it says eligible for this option uh, level. And I'm like, because I call, I'm like, like, can you give me the same level on the CRA? And I'm like, no, we can't. So I don't know why, what's different there. It's something with the plan rules of that company retirement account. So, you know, just keep that in the back of your mind. Depends on the type of account, retirement the account you have, uh, because I've heard conflicting information, right? Yeah. Interesting that you mentioned CCL because I we didn't even talk last week and I was looking at that too, and I'm like I was waiting I was looking at earnings and I was like maybe I I held off because I thought maybe they'll miss earnings and you can get it cheaper so I'm 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 waiting and seeing so I you bought really a buy premium but right around that 200 premium average I could not go wrong but really honestly if you look at the monthly chart on that thing look where it's at. It's yeah. below, you know, like 2011, 2012, 2013, 2014 levels, 2010 levels. Come on, folks. Come That's on. the thing. Their earnings are going to suck ass. I mean, this maybe blank. it probably will. Yeah. Um, but I gave now, myself room to buy some more if I wanted. Yeah, to. hopefully, hopefully what, what's going to be key in the CCL earnings is going to be guidance and what their thoughts of the future is. So. Uh, earnings are going to just suck. So hopefully their guidance, you know, helps the helps the stock out. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I think that's a money maker for me. Honestly, I don't even, you know, I'm just not a big person that likes buying premium, but I will make strategic buys. And Baba was one of those ones that I was so close to picking up right when it got around the 200 um price so what the hell's the damn screen <laughs> need to get back to the, okay here we go um you know it came so close to buy i just didn't pull the trigger because of all the china news that you know that's been coming out recently about 
every Didi with doo-doo, right? I mean, what happened to Didi? <laughs> you know, and like every stock over there um, just got crushed, you know? And I mean, granted, in my opinion, Baba is about in the top three stocks you can buy of Chinese stocks, in my opinion, maybe the top two, right? So I felt confident buying it and I just didn't because it's the whole mentality that, uh, well, you know, we're down 500 points or 550 points. You know, it looks like we might test the bottom as you can go and drop down. You know, I call it like, um, it's like Minesweep or something like that, where you click on this and boom, boom, it drops down. You know, anybody's played Minesweep before? Mm -hmm. uh, that's what it kind of reminded me of. Like when the market drops down 550 and it got down there a couple of times and then you click on that last little time bomb, boom, you drop down to another leg, right? So I just thought we we're going to go down lower, and uh, so I just held off, and you know, it turned out it was the wrong move. But um, it is what it is. I, you know, I wonder if did Cloud buy any? Uh, not that I'm aware of. I don't remember. I don't recall. They all followed me into freaking uh, Ten Cent Music, <laughs> and it just <laughs> kept going. Traders. Down. Parent it traders just kept going down. So that's oh, that's the man. one. That's the one that I fat fingered. So. Did I fat finger anything last week? I did fat finger something, but it was actually added contracts instead of selling by mistake. Because <laughs> uh, it was there were spreads. So I've made that mistake a couple of times. You gotta really look at IB. Is it a positive number or is it a negative number? But yeah. Uh MDB, I, hey Dave, loved your most recent video on your hidden off good channel. Hey, thanks a lot for that. It was a off the cuff video, it was recommended, not recommended. It was suggested by somebody on my um, my regular channel, my investing channel. They they wanted to see that, so I don't even know if they actually watched the video, which is kind of funny. But yeah, I, I was suggested. I liked, I liked the video. I was I was actually surprised that how I was actually surprised to see how small of a space you are actually in right now. <laughs> it's <recording>. small. Yeah, <laughs> it's like I said. Uh, I'm literally sitting at an angle. Because if I sat that way, I have no place to put the camera. That's the weird thing about YouTube studios. You actually have to have the table turned the other way. You know, yeah. you actually have to have, like, facing the wall. You know what I mean? Instead of, like, yeah. traditional desks are always facing the wall, YouTube studios have to have it the other way around, where your back is against the wall, right? Yeah. I have no room for that. That's why I'm always, my angle's over here. My camera's right there. But I'm looking at my monitor, so it just, it looks weird. So that's the way it is. Yeah, um... For anybody that doesn't know, that was like a 26-minute video kind of talking about everything I need to do for to fire to get ready to hike that place to trail. And then I kind of did a walk around, you know, of the place I've lived in for the last eight years and show you the studio, if you want to call it that, <laughs> show you the closet, show you the family room where I'm packing and all that stuff. So uh, go over there and subscribe and support me over there. I'm trying to get that channel up to a 1,000 subscribers before I go hike to AT. That way I can touch more people on the trail. But uh, thanks a lot for the MDB. Um, but I'm not sure if I can PMC. Yeah. I don't think you can either. Um, Fidelity Fidelity's tough. Yeah, Fidelity is like really old school. So, and they're, they're just like, they're a nanny freaking broker. Just like freaking Schwab is. So what I would recommend is, is this a retirement account for her? I think it is. I think I it just is. want to open another brokerage account for IB or something at some point. Be like Matt Money with you know a thousand accounts. Um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, unfortunately, I, I'm kind of in the same boat on the retirement side. So until I open the IRA, um, what is the minimum account balance required for IB card to utilize margin for options? So that's a tough question to answer because. To me, a true margin account is 25K, right? But there is also a different type of margin where the money settles immediately, but it's not a true margin account. Right. Right? So I don't know how to answer that question. And like a reg T account is 25K, right? Yeah. And and we're we're technically not using margin. We're not utilizing margin. We're we're utilizing right. the buying power that interactive brokers gives us. Um, unless you run out of actual cash uh, to get a, a signed position or something, you will never use margin. But I don't think 
in one of those other types of accounts that we're talking about, the non-25, non-reg T and margin account, you probably couldn't leverage, right? I don't think so. So they couldn't technically do what we're doing, right? If they have 25K available, let's just say 20, 20K available, they could only put on, you know, I guess, uh, shit, six contracts of QQQ or something like that. That'll get them to write the, around that 20K, right? So, yeah, it's a tough question to answer just because, you know, if it's a reg T account, it's 25K. And that would give you four to one. So you'd have basically 100K. When I started with interactive brokers, I didn't have that much money in there. Um, I was just trading options. Um, but... I ran into the problem of being uh, marked as a PDT pattern day trader. So um, if you don't have 25K in there, then uh, you can't make quick moves. That's the 25K. So that's a sec, a sec requirement, not a broker requirement. The 25K reg T the pattern DT rule. But I guess the next best thing, best thing is, is to have whatever account you can get that doesn't um, take two days to settle. Right. That's not a margin account though. Right. No, I don't know what it's, that's called. That's just cash settled or something. I don't know. I think it's, I think it's called a limited margin account. Yeah, I believe so. I've never had one of those. And that's the reason why I really can't speak much about it because I don't know. Um, if anybody knows specifically in the comments or the chat over here, let us know. Um, we got a lot of IBers in here. So, uh, an existing account must have at least that's portfolio margin though. Yeah. yeah. He, um, was it 110? It's 111 or something around there. I think it's Steve. Yeah. So yeah, it's six to one, 6.7 to one or something like that. A portfolio margin with IB. I think it needs to remain above a hundred. So if it goes below that, Let's see, at least 110. Maybe it's 120. You know what it is? I think it needs to remain above 110, just like he says here. If it drops below 110, they'll automatically downgrade you immediately. Um, but it's 125K, 125K to can, enable. He continues below. Oh, does he? Okay. 125K and enable to enable it versus some other places require like 150, 160, I believe. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that wasn't really the question that Chase was asking, though. He wasn't asking about portfolio margin, but we'll touch on the portfolio margin too. Golden boy, what's going on? What time is it where you're at? <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, so Thumper did a great video today um, on zebras. So, and we're not pulling your leg, okay? Because <laughs> even though we've thought pretty much over the last, I don't know, how many months was it been, Jerry? Seven, eight months that we thought Thumper was made that term up? Yeah. <laughs> it's like all the other things up. that we... What's that? Did he make it up? Did he make it no, up? No, he didn't make it up. It's a real strategy, apparently. <laughs> it's a pretty interesting video. Um, I don't recommend watching it right when you first wake up uh, because it's pretty, it's pretty heavy, pretty deep, pretty tough to understand. And, you know, I just woken up and it's like, man, I, I need to rewatch this thing again. Um, it sounds pretty, pretty attractive. You know, I know we used to bust his balls about PMC. Why would you do that? We just buy the stock, you know. <laughs> so and that's just kind of how that's just Thumper. Thumper is one of those people that will blurt, blurt stuff out, blurt stuff out, take a bunch of shit for it. And then eventually people see the light. So, oh, shit, we should have been doing this the whole time. Yeah, he's a very good, very good. Um, I'd say he's a very good learner. Because he, he really can break it down and, and figure things out where my head is just, you know. Well, if your head just, just like that, my whole body. Because it's, it's a pretty tough one to understand. And that's just probably because I was, you know, just woken up, I guess. I don't know. That's, that's my excuse, folks. Um, he goes through it pretty well. He even goes through examples and stuff. So, But even I was having trouble following it, so I probably need to watch it again. But go check it out. It's actually pretty cool. It's a, just, 
as he mentions in the video, it's another tool to have in the tool shed. And that's, I think that's great because, you know, okay, spreads, I got iron condors, I got jade lizards. You know, I mean, they're all tools to have in the tool shed, right? So add the zebra to your list. Jerry, what did you do with the stock that just dropped from 20 to 9? Was that the HT? Uh, a few days? No. No. You and was, I had sold puts on that, got out and took a $400 loss. That was CVM. Uh, they failed. A, it was a biopharmaceutical company. They failed a trial. Um, they're reapplying for uh, FDA approval of something. Um, I'm still in it. I, I sold three puts. Um, it's got until next Friday. Um, it actually dropped down to freaking 750 or somewhere down there. Um, it looks like it's it's on its path to recovery uh, back to it's back to like nine something I think it is. Um, so we'll see. Uh, I'm holding on to it. Um, if if the uh, that's the thing with these biotech biopharmaceutical stocks, it's all news. It's all news. All rumor. It's all it's it's. You know, you, you really, it's really, not, it's, I suggest never playing those type of stocks. Bio, biopharmaceuticals. I just, don't know what you got into this for. I'm going <laughs> to like call trash on this position. Oh, it's trash. It's I, trash. this is not Jerry like at all here, folks. <laughs> he does not get into this stuff. Uh, this is junk. This thing looks like it's bear flagging right now too. So, yeah, um, yeah. I mean, biotech in general is just just as you mentioned, but this is like trash of the trash. Twenty five percent short float. That might help you, but um, help you help you do what? I, I just I don't. Ugh, this thing looks dangerous. Yeah. That's uh, ugly. How many contracts you got? Only three. Only. How much? Oh, how much premium did you get for this thing? I don't know. I think I got a hundred freaking dollars or something like that. Ooh, this thing looks. Yeah. No, it was more than that. I think I don't remember. Anyway, it's a uh, it's a crap stock, and this is what happens when you play with these small micro cap stocks. That's that's more likely. It's it's far more likely that stuff like that's going to happen. You should just take ownership of it and freaking colonize it. That's probably what I might do. <laughs> might we'll as well see. at this point. I mean, it's it's recovered. It went it recovered from seven fifty all the way up to it's like nine fifteen or something at end of day after hours Friday. So People, we'll see what happens. I, I think it's just short covering. That's what it looks like. And if they just hopefully they keep covering. <laughs> well, the thing is, it's got it's short attacked and then people short cover to close, but um I don't know. It looks like it's bear flagging to me, but yeah. It's, I don't know. It's, it's, When's that expire? Friday. Friday. All right. Well, we'll keep us updated on that. <laughs> yep. Oh man, folks. Yeah. Wh who is this guy here, folks? <laughs> we got here Joomer. What's going on? Yeah, there's the Discord. Take a look at the Discord. I'm pretty sure if we hadn't seen any new faces, but uh, most people. Um, yeah, probably most of the people here are already on Discord. If not, check out the Discord. We uh, we chat in there every Thursday night as well. Um, you get access to a bunch of brilliant minds, including Thumper and James, um, and of course, Jerry. MDB, let's see here. Dave, I actually also follow your blog posts on your website. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Shit. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know. Maybe I should just do a once a month post. I don't know. I need to figure that out. I mean, if you got it, you got to commit at least something to it, Dave. Yeah. It's it's tough to do a weekly post, though. And honestly, there's not like a lot that changes um, if I'm doing I, indexes, right? Yeah, I think monthly would be fine. What did your, what did Carrie say? Oh, nothing. There. <laughs> yeah, let me think about that. Like I said, nobody was really contributing, so, and maybe that's just normal. Maybe that's how blogs are. I don't know. I I figured people would comment or something, but maybe not. 
I think that's normal for blogs. It's not unless you're super huge. I don't think there's going to be very many comments on there. Yeah, that's what she said. Um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> uh, yeah, maybe I'll do a, just a monthly update. If you don't get a, like, you don't get a traffic. Uh, I got or, analytics, but you got to understand that the uh, what do you call it? The spreadsheets are out there too, so there's a lot of traffic going to that. So it's hard to decipher. I can see what pages are going to, but yeah, I don't know. I'll have to revisit that. I think the monthly update would be the best, but you got to understand, I'm going to be hiking freaking, you know, next year and stuff, so there won't be any updates. But so I guess everybody's going to not go to the blog. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I appreciate the comment and the feedback, though. You know what I mean? So I know a grateful man was asking about it last week, too. Yeah. Um, it's just not a lot of updates right now, right? That's the thing. Like, it's so, you know, what, put one thing on, took one thing off. You know, it's like, <laughs> I can't make a, a blog post about that. So, anyways, uh, Mommy Trader, let's see. Hey, guys, stopping for a few minutes and taking notes. Um, she's got an IB account. I don't know if she's doing any options in there, but she's got an IB account because I saw her video recently. So, good to have you. Um, I put a video out today or yesterday. It's hard to stay up with her videos because she puts a lot of them out. So I don't know where she gets the time to make them all with a family. But uh, I have no family, um, and I have a hard time putting two out. So <laughs> let's see. Uh, good to see you. Y'all, if you have any questions, ask away. Great knowledge base. Uh, I agree completely. Hot Dave, let's go. Let's see. I only put one thing on. What you put on, James? Only one thing? I, I, I That sounds very unrealistic. That's not James. <laughs> That's Imposter. not James. <laughs> uh, he's probably got like 90% calls on and then about, what, 10% puts. Yeah. Because he believes that the market's going down. And I don't disagree. The market is overextended, but there's a lot of catalysts to push it higher, right? And that's this thing right there. So far, I've been right. So uh, this one time, <laughs> I'm usually wrong. Uh, let's see here. I didn't. I didn't buy anything on Thursday. First time I didn't buy. It. Yeah, um, it's hard to take advantage of those down days. It's hard to buy on. In this case here, sell to open. But I think of it as just buying stock too. On when well, there's blood in the streets. Normally, I'm a great medic going around there repairing all those people that got shot up and are damaged in the streets, right? I'm a medic going around repairing all those people, putting tourniquets and stuff out there on these people, these, you know, beating up stocks. But I just didn't do it for some reason. I don't know why. Um, I just thought for sure it was going to hit a mine, a landmine, and just tick down lower, but it just didn't. And I didn't expect it to uh, reverse the same day. But anyways, it is what it is. Uh, but here's the thing. It does that again. Say it does it this week or whatever. More people are likely to buy when it does that this time. Yeah. But it's more, it's honestly more likely to make a lower low this time. Just in general because it's taken a lot of that support that it had and, and kind of – it's like a daggered at it, you know, kind of bust a little bit of a hole. Now this time, it you know, it's digging even deeper and it could go lower. Um, it's just kind of how my brain thinks, but Gary, what's going on? Uh, let's see here. Spy not chilling currently, uh, was 16 year today. Yeah. It's still right around there. Um, the market is, yeah, it's pretty much flat right now. Yeah. He full of margin since you gave a tour of where the magic happens, Dave. <laughs> yeah. What the hell is behind that curtain? The wizard of Oz. Yes. This curtain. Yeah. It's just a window, folks. <laughs> That's all it is. It's just a window. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, nobody commented on my dust. That's good. I thought um, I was the only one with a dusty desk. I'm glad yeah, to see this it. This is bad, too. <laughs> this is bad. But it's so, when you got so much junk on here, it's like you literally have to take everything off the desk to clean it, you know? And it's like, mm -hmm. well, makes no sense to do that if I'm going to leave here in like nine months. <laughs> um, 
Is that a <laughs> is that a man thinking right there? I think so. Yeah, <laughs> a single <Yeah>. guy. <laughs> oh man. Uh, if I ever brought a girl here, maybe I'd clean it up. But it just tells you that there's cobwebs all over this room. Um, balance needed to do CSPs with margin. I use Fidelity now, but what? What I have heard, IBCR, IBCR has four to one margin. It's the buying power we're talking about. Yeah, that's a Reg T account. So 25K. She's off on Sundays, Jerry. Well, we're wow. glad you're hanging out with us on tonight, um, Rebecca. We had a great discussion, honestly, on Thursday. She hung out um, at her workplace, clocked in. <laughs> Basically, didn't have to do it. Like, we were on there till really late, too. Really late. And she, I think it was like 1 a.m., 12 a.m. or something like that. Nice job. And, uh, she literally was on the camera the whole time. Didn't didn't freaking work at all. <laughs> <laughs> kind of funny. Hopefully, your freaking employers aren't seeing this. Uh, IPKR gave you a 4041. Dave's safe. Yeah. I don't do Dave's. I don't do five percent probably the money on most stuff anymore, um, unless it's like a Amazon or something. But dividend expat. Hey, Dave, Jerry, boy, this is Jacob Incognito on Twitter. <laughs> oh man, where are you expatting? You have us all. You have us all <laughs> confused and baffled, and inquiring minds want to know. We have no idea who you are, and you like, like came people. out of nowhere. You came out of nowhere too, <laughs> so we think that you know us very well, and that could just because you watched our videos. But it's it's just interesting. I enjoyed your post on seeking alpha today. Um, go follow him, Jacob Incognito on Twitter. Uh, actually, he can't post it in there. Maybe one of the mods could post his Twitter account in there. Because uh, it has the link. I don't know if I have the link to it. But it was actually interesting seeking out a post. I actually enjoy stuff like that. I'm not normally a big blog post watcher or anything like that anymore. Um, just because my time is consumed. But it was actually, I like it. I'm enjoying it. So, yeah. Dividend yeah and I'm, not, I'm not big on Twitter. So, I only go on there like every other day or something like that. So, a lot of times I'll go on there and I'm like, what the hell? 40 notifications. <laughs> and it's always <laughs> yeah. Jacob Incognito retweeted your tweet. And then, you know, from there, people like it and all that stuff. So I'm like, wow, that's cool. <laughs> yeah. He, uh, maybe I need to get him to write blog posts, my freaking blog. So there you go. There you go. Another fire person or something like that. Cause he's pretty good fire. I think he's another engineer as well. Lots of engineers, folks. Um, we're smart. <laughs> Lots of engineers chase fire, and it makes sense, too, just because of the type of brain we have. But um, you're an engineer, too, right? Yeah, I am. I am a, uh, a money transfer engineer. There you go. No. Um, I have to say that's the military definition of an engineer because it's, it's, they'll literally assign engineer to any, like if a ditch engineer, you dig ditches, you're an engineer. Sorry, I got to take that back. I'm a currency relocation engineer. There you go. Into your pocket, hopefully. Yep. So, dividend expat. I don't think I've ever seen a comment from you. So uh -huh. You must have, like, some secretive account or something. Or maybe you just watch our our uh, videos and not comment. So, I don't know. That's interesting. Twatter. You must have got that from my video. <laughs> Unless somebody else calls it that. Uh, open the margin account with IB using Dave's referral code. Refund. Oh, well, hey, thanks for that. Um, hopefully, he's some... got the the most strict freaking referral program out there <laughs> known to mankind. It's like, uh, yeah, I don't even know how to explain it. It's like a year long referral code. Um, hopefully, I don't know. Do they actually give the people that use it something? I don't know. Me and um, Cloud Ninja. Stock Ninja um, did it, you know, what is it? It's going on a year, so we got to see whether one of us gets a gets a referral. <laughs> yeah, it's it's super strict, too. Um, I don't even know if technically how I have it posted out there, if people are, if I'm even allowed to do that. That's how strict it is. Yeah. 
their uh, terms of service is pretty, pretty freaking crazy. And I guess they're just, uh, they're like, you know, we don't need to do that. <laughs> we don't need to be a freaking Robin Hood. You know what I mean? So they honestly are one of the best brokers out there for doing what we're doing. You cannot deny that. Um, Thumper may disagree, but I'm just kidding, Thumper. Uh, let's see here. Uh, well, thanks for that. Hopefully, uh, I hope you get something. Um, I like those types of win-win deals where I get something, you get something. I'm not really one of those persons all about, you know, just me, 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 you know. Otherwise, I'd have a Patreon. <laughs> so, uh, let's see. Nice growth. Welcome to IBKR, gang. I agree. I've been using IBKR for so long. And they, they do have some quirks. Don't get me wrong. They have some quirks. It's not the best platform, per se, as far as, like, for options. But it is all, it is like an a la carte type of platform. You can do a lot of stuff from it other than just options. But um, margin is great. Super cheap commissions. So you might say, well, I can go over here and get free commissions. There ain't nothing. There's no free lunch in this world, folks. You're paying for it one way or another. They're selling those trades to some other brokerage, and they're filling it, and they're making the money, just like M1 Finance is probably doing. So there is no free lunch. Baba, 199. Chinese stock. Yeah, I agree. Um, I looked at it, and it was like it hit 198 or th something that day. I mean, even at 200 is great. I mean, 199 is better. But if it drops back down there, if we have like another drop, I'm actually probably going to – pull the trigger this time so i'll be get trigger happy first chinese stock for for them interesting honestly it's about the best chinese stock there is out there baidu's i'd say pretty good right up there too um it's another one is tsm is tsm a freaking chinese stock let's see here that's taiwan no um it's a big stock though tsm is yeah it is uh baidu baba i think you go to the second tier you'll probably go to like jd jd i've heard a lot about um honestly i thought uh i thought like i was all interested in dd before it went doo doo on me you know because i'm like all right well uber right uber you know lyft but folks those those types of things you don't know the economy over there maybe people mm -hmm. don't need to over there maybe they all you know ride freaking one wheels or something knock off one wheels right you don't know <clears throat> if or they're ride scooters or whatever right i mean maybe the the uh the roads are so congested like why would you get a uber like almost in like new york city right yeah. let's just walk or ride a one wheel or something so yeah i mean I thought it was a good deal. Uh, you know, I, I was interested in it, but I'm glad I didn't go go down that route. So uh, I would stick with Baba for sure. Baba is definitely top notch Chinese stock. Um, that you know they just got done paying a fine. So you know, I mean, how how low can that darn thing go? It's it's cheap at this point. Let me see if my A key would work on my laptop. Let's see here. Yeah. Um, to me, the stock's cheap. It's down for the year, 11% year to date. It's under, it's, well, it says it's fairly valued, but I, I think, I just think it's, you know, I don't know. I like the stock. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I think, um, Baidu is kind of the, it's kind of like a Google here. That's what Baidu is. So I, I think that. I haven't looked at that one in a while. I say that's my second favorite one. Um, and that one's kind of cheap right now, too. It's down year to date as well. So I still think that both those stocks are are somewhat cheap, but I don't know. We'll see. Uh let's see here. Um for long combos on IBKR, if you have to sell a negative number, just make things sound more complicated. <laughs> I agree. The combos are confusing if you've been selling premium for a while. Luckily, it just says submit, right? So you don't have to get that right. Um, 
But when it comes to the number down there, it's a negative number or it's a positive number. And that determines whether it's a credit or a debit. Right. Right. But when you go to get rid of the thing, it's not like if you sold to open. Uh, well, it's not really a sell to open the combo. No, it you're buying the combo. The positive number as a combo. Yeah, you're buying the combo. If it's a combo, yeah. you're buying it. You're so buying that's it. why I always like when I when I mess with those, even though I fat fingered that one. I like to right click and click close and not buy or sell. Good tip. Good tip. And you know what? I think I did the same thing. I forgot to bring that tip up. But um, the easy way to tell is if you go in there into where your portfolio was, it shows all your positions. It'll be a negative number or it'll be a positive number. It's a negative number. It's going to be red, assuming you have the, the color turned on. Right. And if it's a positive number, it'll be green. And there you go. That tells you whether or not you need to sell to close or sell to open or buy to close or buy to open. In this case here, if it's a, a positive number, then you need to sell to close, right. which is the opposite of what we've all been doing. Uh, so, yeah. And... Yeah, you can put them on individually. I did talk about this last week. If you put them on individually, you're going to probably get screwed um, by one not filling. Could take a while to fill, not fill at all, or you might not get the price that you wanted versus doing it the other way. And this is, you know, Jerry has a good experience here and why he wanted to put them on individually because he can control the prices. But the problem is, is if there's no, um, what do you call it, no open interest there or whatever, then it might not fill, right? So with the bag order, which that's what it's called, is a bag order, it has to fill. They both have to fill at the same time, right? It's just a combo order. One won't fill out the, out the other. So I got screwed in that with doing that with Google. I'm like, oh, let me just put this on down here. I'll go down, you know, 500 points down. I'll freaking buy this one down here. It didn't fill. So. <laughs> so um yeah there there is a positive with doing the bag order but you have to be mindful of how to close the darn thing um otherwise you'll burn a hundred dollar bill <laughs> yeah <laughs> so and i made that mistake by the way last week when i was messing around with the paper trading account so i was just trying to get rid of a combo trade in there i think an iron condor or something like that i was messing with my script and uh, I thought I got out of it. And come to find out, I just add more contracts to it. <laughs> so imagine if that was in a real account, right? That probably was like a two or three hundred dollar bill, you know. Um, which video? Did you not watch that video on my other channel there? Hidden off grid. I thought no, maybe she didn't watch it. Yeah, don't don't judge me. <laughs> <laughs> um, I had fun making that video because it's different too. I don't know why the sound didn't come through on the camera as well, though. Um, I actually had the lav mic right here when I was walking around. For some reason, it just didn't pick it up, which is weird. But I'm still figuring that all out. Um, it was a different type of video for me. I actually enjoyed it. Uh, it's a taxable. She got a taxable account in Fidelity. So is it because it's not a margin account? Um, or Fidelity also she's not... She's just not experienced yet. Well, that could be, but Fidelity also has uh, their own minimum amount requirements. So they have you have to have a minimum of like twenty grand in there to enter certain trades. So that could possibly be a, a an issue as well. Like I can't put on any. Like I can. What is it? Ah. Maybe I'll I'll have to look it up next time. But it, it there's a there's a warning pop up when I go to try to do some trades, and if I try to do it on margin, it'll say uh, you need twenty thousand dollars in equity to perform this trade. I'm like, I don't understand. I can change I change it to cash, and it'll fill because it it's using the cash that I have in the uh, account. So it's just it's Fidelity's weird. Yeah, I'm wondering if it's just because she doesn't have the experience yet, right? It could be partly that, but it could be the account size too. And honestly, a lot of those go 
hand in hand, right? Like if you have a bigger account, it's a lot easier to get approved for a higher level too. Yeah. So, I mean, you're doing great. You just made money on your first options trade ever way ahead of schedule too. <laughs> so I think it was like a September or October you had on. It was a September. So, there recall. you go. 47.50 on TQQQ. There you go. Um, you're doing great. And, you know, a higher level will come eventually at some point. But I would honestly get out of, not get out of, I would open an IV account eventually. It's down the road. Let's see here. BTFD. Anybody who doesn't know, that came from Putin, by the way. Buy the F and dip. Um, he coined it. Did uh, really? he didn't coin it. What's that? He did? I didn't know that. Uh, pretty sure he did. <laughs> I like to think that he did. It's been several years, like 2015, 2014. So, uh, my swab PCRA personal. What the hell's a CRA? I know what a CRA is. I have a CRA, company retirement account, but I don't know what a P is. Personal? I would assume it's personal. Yeah. Won't give me any options trading privilege at all. They said my company doesn't allow it. Interesting. Okay, so this must be his pension company retirement account. Um, huh. Freaking companies. So, uh, you know what? Here's what I'll do. Because I have the plan documents for my CRA, right? Those plan documents, I have them, literally. They're in electronic form. It's my company, okay, uh, that sponsored the CRA. So I have those plan documents. I'll look in there. I don't think it mentions anything about options or anything like that in there. Nothing about stock trading or nothing. So it'll be interesting. I would, I would do is I would look at your plan documents and see if it's in there because that might learn us something. And that's kind of cool. I like learning something like that. The thing is, is, I don't even know what I know, right? Because I haven't gone through retirement yet because I haven't retired. I'm not 59 and a half. I don't have a Roth because I could never qualify for one. Because I don't have all that stuff, I don't know a lot of those ins and outs, right? Until I actually go through it, then I become the SME on it, right? Because I, if I know more than somebody else, I'm the SME on it, right? Even though I'm not really the subject matter expert per se. But if I know more than you, then I'm the expert at it compared, right? Um, that's just the way... That other people talking IT crew Phil, but that'd be interesting to know. Look at those documents. I'll look at mine and see if it's in there. Um, my CRA, they would only give me level zero, which honestly is not very much. <laughs> so it's covered calls. I think I can do covered or cast your puts, but I can't do anything advanced in there. So I will be opening an IRA account, which I'll end up doing um, the SEP, which I talked about. I think, did I talk about that last week, Jerry? SEP. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, not a SEP IRA, folks. Don't get that confused. S-E-P-P, substantial equal payments or substantially equal periodic yeah. payments or something like that. Yeah. Rule 72T. Uh, let's see here. Did you call I don't call. I, I just can't deal with because they don't know what the hell you're talking about half the time. <laughs> um, I literally called and went round and round about the SEP. <laughs> yeah, you need to have a company. You need to have a spoon. Like, no, not a SEP IRA. A SEP program. A SEP, you know, Rule 72T. And the guy's like, yeah, I don't know. You know, I don't do that. So, yeah. Uh, okay. That's like me at work at 3 a.m. I try, but I cannot watch videos about options in the wee hours. Yeah, and it makes sense. Zacadium rhythm. Um, Zacadium? What do they call those things that came out of the freaking ground after the last 18 years, 20 years, or whatever? Zacadas. Cicadas. Is that the same? Zacadian rhythm? Is that the same thing? I don't think so. <laughs> It makes sense to me. They're like underground for 20 years. It's a circadian rhythm, right? Like, yeah. Anyways. Um, what is the sharpest tool in the tool shed? Ooh, good question. Yeah, I don't know. Not be circumcised. Sorry. Um, let's see here. The sharpest tool in the shed. I don't know. <laughs> That's a good question. 
They all it's have not, their not, They all have Dave, their advantages. Dave, it's not a question. It's, not, it's, okay. a, it's a statement. <laughs> Let's see here. Jet, that is a thing. Your employer negotiates what is available to you in your PCRA. You could try asking your benefit coordinator. Yeah. That'd be kind of interesting. <laughs> Ask your freaking benefit coordinator that. What are you talking about? They won't know what you're talking about at all. Yeah, we need some options. We need options. Jeez. <laughs> you know, this is not a separate. I mean, they wouldn't know what you're talking about. I'm sorry. Unless they're like avid investors, you know, and more advanced or something, they'll probably try to talk you out of doing options, what they're probably going to talk about. If they know anything about options, yeah, you don't want to do those, you know, but I think that's kind of dumb that a company would not allow you to do that. Why would the company not allow you to do that? What, unless... It's like company stock or something, maybe, right? Like they don't want you doing under the, under the company stock, right? But I don't know. That's weird. I wonder if they're anybody just, knows the answers to these questions. They're just trying to protect you. Yeah, you know what? I don't like the nannyism, you know, of the brokers and stuff. I don't. I want them to let me make the mistakes. To the okay, let me just say this. I want them to let me make the mistakes up to the point that it doesn't hurt them, right? And that's really ideally what they're trying to do. They're not trying to prevent you from doing anything to hurt yourself per se. They're really trying to protect themselves of what they're trying to do. But I want the brokers to allow me to do whatever I want to do with the exception of hurting them, right? Um, yeah, anyways. Does that make any sense, Jerry? Makes total sense. Okay. Well, it's your, I mean, it's our money. We should be able to do whatever the heck we want to do with it. Oh, God. So, it's my money and I want it now. It's our uh, decisions. It's our, I mean, it's ours, should be under our control. 25 not needed for margin IBA. Yeah. Well, it's a different type of our margin. So I initially opened my account with 5K and had 41 inch. What? What? What are you talking about? Talking about Willis? Yeah, they give you the buying power. You just don't have the. Um, you can't leverage. Yeah. So what? So what you're saying here is, if he had five thousand dollars in there, and he has a four to one, he could put twenty thousand dollars worth of maintenance margin on. Well, he'd be pretty friggin' yeah. Could <laughs> you're, he? You could, but that'd be kind of dumb. I don't understand how that's possible. Fucking <laughs> PH, by the way, people. Um, I don't understand <laughs> what's going on with these brokers. That's confusing to me. The buying power and the margin is totally separate. So you can put it on, but you can't take ownership. Correct. That's scary, actually. I don't know. That's weird. I don't know. I've never, jeez, I should open a small account just to see, but I can learn all this stuff. But yeah, I don't know. It's in your best interest to uh, build your account as fast as possible anyway. Get above that 25K uh, PDT rule issue, cash settle, blah, blah, blah. Uh, hi, Rebecca. Um, glad to have you here. Hope your fire journey, your fire journey is going well. Um, I think it may be two thousand or twenty five hundred for a margin account. With I, yeah, I think when I opened it, it was ten k. But I think you're right. It's like two grand or something like that. Pattern day trade rules. I see that's strange. A Reg T account is supposed to get rid of that, right? Not anything below that. Hmm. What he said, what she said. Uh, see, good evening. Hey, there's all good right there. She got back from her walk. Um, all right, let's go, folks. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, so I'm with James on that one. I think we go down a bit, even if temporarily. So keeping my percent use. Yeah, I am too, but um, 
look, folks, if it goes up for the next 10 weeks or whatever, they're both wrong. If it goes down and continues to go down, they're both right. Everybody can make a prediction, right? And if it goes down two years later, it doesn't make you right, right? That's the reason why people put all these things out there. You know, see, I was right. You know what I mean? Like, it doesn't work like that, right? Um, they're not trying to do that, by the way. I'm just saying that's why people try to stuff us out there and make all these predictions is because they want to say they're right when it does happen. But look, if it happens two years down the road, you're not right, right? Happened six six weeks from now, you're not right. You know, it's just prepare, prepare yourself for either direction. There you go. That's the best thing you can do. Uh, maybe you're biased towards the downside. There you go. Uh, maybe you want to have more calls on, like James. Um, a thumper, I don't know what he's doing, but... Okay, honestly, I'm not buying anything at these levels. It scares me. Uh, are you talking about options or are you talking about stocks? I'm still buying stocks, by the way. Dividend portfolio, I don't care. I'll buy down, buy up. Uh, I'll buy at 52-week highs. I, it doesn't matter to me. I'm dca and in. Mark goes down 50%. I'm still making my $23,000 of, or $24,000 of dividend income. Unless something cuts, right? Like, it doesn't, it doesn't matter to me. Um, look at an opportunity if something, like, I, I get where Golden Boy is coming from. But if you're waiting on the sideline for two years for the market to come down, what about all that money you could have made in those two years? It's opportunity cost. How do I know this? Because I did it. I did it in 2016, right? Because I, I thought for sure the, mar the, uh, the election was going the other way. And I was just waiting for it. And uh, I lost out on a boatload of money because I was sitting in cash. You know? Have something on, but maybe have some dry part or two. It definitely sucks buying at all time highs. It's hor it's 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 an ugly feeling. <laughs> and it's almost it's well it's so weird. We can't buy at all time highs, but then we get that same feeling when it drops. <laughs> That's so true. It's, so oh, it's gonna go down lower, it's gonna go down lower. Yeah. Um <laughs> just DC air way in. Not D I mean, I made a video on it, right? It goes down ten percent, I'll buy ten percent. It goes down twenty percent, I'll actually add another twenty or thirty percent. It goes down forty percent, I'll go almost all in. Maybe keep a small amount for fifty percent drop. That's fifty percent's my max, right? Like that's just how I play it, right? And I even have a different strategy. I probably would take the, play with the TQQQs, but even Thumper though, maybe I'd go with a freaking zebra. I don't know. So, what stocks are you guys liking if we dip? TQQQ. Yeah. There you go. I'd do the same thing. Hands down. I might strategic buy stocks strategic strategically. Jeez, Jerry, I'm just about statistics for you. Strategically <laughs> buy, you know, like a like a Boeing as an example for 2020. Like that was a freaking buy of the century right there. It might actually still be a good buy of the century, but that was the buy of the century. I can't think of many other stocks that were could not go bankrupt, right? Even though it looked like it was going to, like that just that the, that this world needs. You know what I mean? Like the government, the good old government, right? That company Boeing's too big to fail. The government would not would not let that fail. So that was the buy of the century. Buying leaps on that would have been that would have made you a boatload of money. Yeah, I'd definitely look to pick up some leaps, that's for sure. No, so I'd probably we, buy strategic, strategically. Like maybe I'd do almost all TQQQs, right? And then uh, probably maybe, you know, if there's like a Boeing or something like that. Yeah. Um, what are you buying, uh, Just in Time Finance? What would you buy? Rebecca, let's see. Jesus. Dusty desk for nine months. <laughs> Jesus. I knew it. I freaking knew it. If I didn't mention it, she wouldn't even have known. <laughs> um, that's how I keep the desk in a per pristine shape, by the way. So it can't scratch and stuff. I got to make it through the dust first. <laughs> All right. And also, it's my notepad. I don't have to freaking have a notepad. It's right in the desk. There you go. Uh, keep my buying power. Yeah, my buying power is low right now as well. Yeah, like 2 a.m. my time. 
my gravy job for sure. Gravy train. All right. Uh, so I think it's this uh, twatter. Yeah, that's him. So go follow him. And then his latest post, if he didn't retweet mine or whatever, um, he's got a post out of Seeking Alpha. Kind of a, another fire starter, fire slash follower. Uh, our fire journeyer. Maybe options engineer. There you go, Enduri. If you've been no, classified wait, as wait, 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 wait. It'd be it'd be a derivatives market engineer. You gotta make it sound, you know, fancy. DME, folks. He's a DME. <laughs> uh let's see here. We could come up with a better one, like, you know. Something that's kind of nasty or whatever. Typical Dave freaking humor. Yeah. Um, if you have been classified as PDT hot keep 25k heart hot keep 25k equity at all times in margin account. I got a minimum equity call last week. Well, you do. There is it's there is a 25k minimum for that, but yeah. you definitely want some cushion because they can definitely get back at you at a market in a market dip i don't so i've had a count that was like right around there but i can't remember um what happened do they lower you down out of market like reg t immediately i mean if let's say you have a 25 account you got mark reg t turned on do they just lower it down if it drops down to 20. well he's talking specifically about the pattern day trader yeah so you can't well, that, if, if, if if something were to go wrong, this is just okay. Say you were 25 grand, you put on some puts in the morning, right? And the market fell and you wanted to get out of them, but you've it your your net lick fell between below 25k or whatever it was. Now you can't, you know, get out of a bunch of stuff because then you'd be a pattern day trader again. Yeah, you get restricted for 90 days. Um, depends, though. because So the thing it was the options, it's so confusing to me because I've never been in that situation. Jeez, I can't talk. I've never been in that situation. I've been in a PDT issue with a stock where I put a stock on with a free ride, and then I sold it that day and got restricted for 90 days. I don't know how that works with options. I don't know if it's the same thing. Okay, I put one on. Does it give you a free ride restriction or a free ride warning? There's, there's four. I think you can do four in a week, and it's a yeah, rolling. Does it give you a free ride warning? It does give you a warning, and you can reset with it. With options. Once. Yes. With options. Hmm. You can okay. reset it one time. Yeah, you can. You can do the free ride. Just don't yeah. sell it until whatever money you have gets settled. Yeah. But in this case here, the money should be settled anyways, the cash settled account. It's real confusing when you start throwing options in these types because I only know it as a day trader, but I've never had a small options account. So I've never really had to deal with any of that stuff. So I don't really know. And that's I rely you, definitely, on the, you definitely don't want to become marked as a pattern day trader and restricted when you're playing with options. You do not want to do that. Because you, you don't can't want to do a period with any account. You don't want to do a period with any account, but it's it's horrible in options because you're stuck. If if you got something happening with your, you can't even close a position. No, you, you can't do anything. You're restricted. You're, yeah. you're restricted. So you could just you could sit there and watch your money just <laughs> just fly away, and you can't do a doggone thing about it. And hopefully, you put some, you know. Some good stuff on that'll expire worth this anyway. Yeah. Um, the funny thing is about PDT, the PDT rule, is I've had you know retirement accounts that obviously are not margin accounts, so you have to follow the PDT rules there. And honestly, there's been times where the PDT rule helped me. Like, oh, I would you know I would probably sell this if I you know, could, right? And it worked in my favor where because I couldn't sell it. You know, the stock went up more, and you know what I mean? Like, it's just, um, or I was getting scared, so I wanted to sell it, but I couldn't. And then the stock recovered, right? Because I couldn't sell it, you know, I would have sold it if I could have, but because I was the PDT rule, um, 
I had to let it sit there, and guess what? It recovered. So it's worked in my favor, too. Let's see here. Had a cramp in my leg here. Um, just to let everybody know, I should have mentioned at the beginning, um, fingers crossed, I got somebody that committed to uh, being a guest next week. So uh, I'll have to reach out to them next week just to make sure and uh they'll have to come on but uh they should show their face they do have a youtube channel too so hopefully keep your fingers crossed we will have a guest next week uh all right sorry did you did you not see i did not see you blah 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 Let's see okay i have no exit plans on baba let it go for a few years at least unless getting an overvalued i probably don't have the patience for that i was actually going to play with a leap anyway so that kind of limits you know how long anyway, right? Um, but I think you're. I think you'll do okay with it. I think you'll do okay with that position. No, where it's just an aspirational title for now. All right, come join me over and fuck it. Come join me and fuck it. Um, Cebu, Thailand. They have a they have a restaurant called that here. It's funny. It's not pronounced fuck it. It's just what I call it because that's just Dave. That's what it looks like. Um, if you don't like my humor, I'm, I apologize. It's just my humor. Being in the military, um, working for the government, working for the federal government for a long time. It's just the way we are. Uh, yeah, fuck it. Is, it's, I guess, you know, <laughs> uh, what, what's, the, learn to, what, what's the name of that channel, Derry? Retire? I think it's Retire. He called it in his video, Phuket. That's how you really pronounce it, apparently. Phuket. So, <laughs> it looks like fuck it to me. Um, and that's probably what I would have called it if I saw it in the street or whatever. It's not trying to make a joke or anything. It's a joke now, but I probably would have said that to their face. Like, okay, let's go to fuck it next. Or what? Like, that's just because that's how I see it, right? Like Van Nuys, California. I used to call that Van Nuns for years. Years. Until I found out they said it on the radio or on the TV, and then they popped up like a little, you know, a little blurb on the text. It said Van, they said Van Eyes, and it said Van Nuns, right? And they said Van, I'm like, Van Eyes? Van Nuns? Oh, shit. All right. That's just Dave. Um, <laughs> Yo's Might. It's Yo's Might to me. Yo's Might. My son used to call it Yo's Might. It was funny. Ah. Uh, anyways. Oh, my son also, my other son, younger son, you know P.F. Chang's, the Chinese restaurant? Some people might. Um, we were driving by it one time, and he goes, he goes, hey, we got to try P.F. Chang's. <laughs> uh, that that sounds like something I would say if I had never heard somebody call it P.F. Chang's, I guess. That's pretty Chang's. funny. <laughs> He's going to be an engineer. Yeah. We were actually <laughs> oh, talking man. about that last night. It's too. just, you know, if I can only understand, if people can only understand how my brain works, like that's the reason why I do what I do for a living because I'm just not that the brightest tool in the shed, I guess, when it comes to languages and English and stuff like that. Uh, let's see here. Because I did call somebody, I don't know, what, 15 years ago? Call him Jesus. You know? And honestly, I think the guy was offended. I, I, I don't know. I wasn't trying to make a joke or nothing. I was just Jesus. Um, all right. Well, no, no, I just thought it'd be okay. It was fire. Wait. I've been watching the fire space for a long time before it's called fire. What was it called before fire? <laughs> um, people have been doing it for a long time since the 80s that I can remember. There's some people who have been doing it since the 80s. Probably even longer than that, but with these Chinese stocks, there's a big risk. You will be fighting the Chinese government. I agree. Definitely be careful. I would stay out of all those neos. Is ten cent one, Jerry? Well, see, that's the thing. Ten cent is actually one of the bigger ones in China, but the one I'm in is ten cent music, which is a the parent company is 10 cent. So it's, it's like a subset of the bigger company. Definitely be careful what Chinese stock you get into. I feel Baba 
can weather the storm, you know. But to Golden Boy's point, anytime they want to screw with something, they can over there. And they've made that very apparent. Look at 2015. They screw with all casino stocks, right? Yeah, Wynn Resorts over there. Look at the gaming license. I remember. How do I know that? <laughs> because I was joining conference calls because I got effed. <laughs> Owning, well, I was cast your put. I got assigned, and then it went down from 150 down to 50. That's how I know because I joined all those conference calls. Um, yeah, so they can screw with anything over there they want. They can modify the currency. They can screw the currency. They can screw the stock market. Um, yeah, Golden Boy. It's like one percent of my portfolio. Yeah, you should be fine. Um, it's a solid stock. Yes, it's thanks, Thumper. Oh, so we got right here. Um, Got a decent price, Baba under two hundred is a steal. I was waiting, but Didi, <laughs> they got me thinking. Yeah, it's those small stocks. I wouldn't get in Didi at this point with Jerry's money. Um, I almost sold a put on it. Almost. Almost. How's this premium on it? Yeah, I mean, I would have been down at the seven dollar and fifty cent one. I probably would have got like thirty cents on it or something like that. But I have too many. I have too many spec stocks as it is. The problem with stocks like DD is it's brand new. Yeah. There's no like history on it. You know, like it just it's got uh, two weeks. That's it. <laughs> two weeks of data. So yeah, I don't know. Be careful. Um, it's just like lucking, right? Um, I know a, a friend of mine works at freaking Starbucks. And uh, they uh, told me about Luckin. You know, it's from China. <laughs> told me, don't even touch it. You know, so that's saying something. Somebody that's from China that works for Starbucks. There you go. Um, they uh, told me, stay away from it. It's a shell company. <laughs> so, and, and right after he said that, that's when it went down to like below two bucks or whatever it was, like in 2019. So it was kind of funny. Uh, let's see here. Um, does anybody have a below zero cost basis on a position minus CC premium? What's that mean? Does anybody have a below zero cost basis on a position minus CC premium? Do you have a free position after all the premiums you've collected? Well, I mean, geez, that would take me, a it would never happen probably because I'm touching some big stocks. Which stock are you talking about? The Riots and the Mars, Marnas of the world? The Neos? What about uh, Primetime? Have you got any zeros? Uh, not that I'm aware of. I think Thumper might, actually. He has one that he held for years, so he might. What was that stock? <clears throat> It was a financial, it was like a $1 stock or something like that, $2 stock. Yeah, it has to be. How about you get it got down to zero? Uh, good question, Margaret Scraper. Yeah. Um, remember how kind you were about me doing so well when I post my first mistake in Discord tomorrow? When I, what mistake did you put? Did you make a Jerry mistake? <laughs> <laughs> did you fat finger? <laughs> you, you, did you buy to open instead of sell to open? We've all been there, and I do it every once in a while. Still, you know, yeah. like it's it's going to happen. Even didn't I think Thumper just talked about that on Saturday or Sunday? Thumper did it. Yeah, happened yeah. to him. We too. all do it. It's it's going to happen. Yep. Um, I wonder if James has done that. <laughs> I got sure. one of those market scraper thousand shares of MFA. There you go. There it Multi is MFA. Multi-factor authentication. That's what it is. Uh, MFA. What is that? MFA. It's a. It's a. I know it's a financial. Yeah, it's. A, it's a REIT. Might be a mortgage REIT. Yeah, it's a mortgage REIT. Um, it's not doing bad actually. A lot of REITs have come back though. A lot of REITs are pretty much uh, even realty income. Yeah, they're all pretty doing pretty well. Uh, all right. Uh, let's see here. Personal choice retirement plan. PCRA or PCRP. I had one. You can't do any options. 
personal choice retirement plan. There you go. We learned something new, Jerry. All right, let's see. My cost basis with MindMed is negative, all thanks to selling cover calls. There you go. Perfect. Why are you still in MindMed? <laughs> so that's um, the thing. If that were to happen to me, I'd be out. <laughs> oh man, I'm way behind, folks. Sorry. If I catch up in my plan documents on PCR, I could only do mutual funds. Couldn't even do ETS. So it's in the plan documents. I'm gonna look at my CRA just to see. Mine, my account, mine just says CRA. It does it's not a choice retirement plan. It's company retirement plan is what that is. So that's interesting. That's not my 401k. It's just sponsored by the business that I run. But all right. Uh, I think my PCRA plan documents say I could do options on it, but I'd rather leave my nest eggs sit there for now. I have enough options between. There you go. Yeah. It's tough to do options in a lot of different accounts, honestly. That's why I don't even touch the. Um, I don't even touch the retirement accounts or it's just too much work. Because the person in the company that is agreeing to terms doesn't know what they are looking at. I probably the company that has your plan and gets a cut don't want you to blow your account in aggression. <laughs> oh man, nanny brokers. Plays because they don't get to collect their management fees. There you go. Truth here, folks. <laughs> Retirement is retire as early as you can and get that money out. You guys ever mess with leverage ETS? Absolutely. SOXL, TQQQ. What's another one, Jerry? You got any other ones? Uh, there's a few other ones, but SOXL and TQQQ are the only ones that I've actively messed with. Because um, there's there's others that um, it, it depend interactive brokers the margin impact on some of them is like ridiculously high. So um, I found SOXL is decent and so is TQQQ. TQQQ is actually, I think, lower than QQQQ. Yeah. Because there's um, another one, a technology one, uh, TECL, that uh, takes a lot of margin impact. TNA, what about that one? Yeah, that one as well. That one takes quite a bit. Yeah, TNA is another one that we've we've – traded um yeah i think that's it so mostly tqqq soxl for me yeah specimen fine thanks you guys for the apply i applied for there nice that's awesome um this is going to change your life i hope in a good way um if you're not in the discord join the discord go in there hang out and uh, join the Thursday night chats. You can ask questions in there. Yep. You can ask like good positions to put on and stuff. Honestly, uh, you know, everybody's gonna. I think if you ask hundred people, they're all gonna give you hundred different answers, though. Absolutely. So yeah, just stay away from all the scary shit. Uh, go with a go with the company you know that's solid and and just that you wouldn't even mind owning, right? Like I wouldn't mind having hundred shares of this company if something yeah. goes wrong. You don't want to. You don't want to. When you're new to options, you do not want to go into something that's absolutely foreign to you. You want to go into something that uh, you know the majority of the population knows what they do. Don't that's my basically opinion. don't pull an all good and chase the premium. Yeah. Start, start with a Coke. Good. Start with a T. Start with a Bank of America. Start with you know even ETFs. Um, you know, don't don't try to chase that premium because people will say, oh, that premium is good over here. Um, but what's the stock? You know, if you're brand new, don't don't even go there. Good advice. Go back and watch a lot of the other live streams. I've seen your name here before. So um, hope you get approved, too. I don't know what country you're in. Um, hope you get approved. <laughs> They're being pretty strict these days. Lots of, I mean, they look at freaking sperm donation and DNA test and whatever else these days to apply for it. So, I mean, I've heard people having phone interviews. That's crazy. Yeah, that's um, weird. Late to party. Did you have a phone interview? No, I never have. <laughs> uh, late to party. You're just in time, Makeru. 
All right, just in time. Justin, just in time. There you go. Just in time. I see. So I've been buying some value at best I can. Bought some Baba 202 this week. Been selling cover calls. Verizon, MO, KR, WBA. Uh, trying to learn options from you guys. Cover calls is a great way to go. A lot of those stocks don't pay a bunch of premium, but yeah, it is they what don't. It is. a good way to learn. It's free money, really, right? Exactly. Um, Bob is a great one. Um, I, we've been talking about it almost the whole stream. <laughs> I literally almost pulled the trigger right when it was at 200. Because I looked at it when it was like at 212. I'm like, I almost pulled the trigger and buy in a leap then. And I'm like, you know what? I looked at a chart. I'm like, 200 is where I want to buy it. And I just didn't. But I think we'll get another opportunity. Um, let's see here. I think people don't realize if the market drops, the VIX goes through the roof. That's true. It does. Market dropped 550 points. The VIX was up 18 18 percent that day um was it i think it was up 18 percent. it wasn't dollar wise up 18 it was up 18 percent that day and guess what the next day it dropped like a boatload it dropped uh 14 almost 15 percent on friday so that's volatility for you um you could have made a boatload of money if you put contracts on 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 thursday and then you could probably bought most of them back on that friday you probably could have made 40, 50 percent of your money that quick in one day if you had the balls to put them on. Um, yes, you can call. You can get the call immediately. You're restricted to cash only. What's that mean, Jerry? Uh, we're talking about when if you're sitting right at 25k. What do you mean by get the call though? Uh, they can. You, you, get get you get the warning. You get a warning. I call that I breached the BD, PDT. I think I got an email. You're restricted for 90 days. Or, or I don't know. I had a margin call too. They didn't call me on a margin call. On I, on interactive brokers, you'll actually get a pop up. Yeah, this is prior to pop up stuff, though. <laughs> Probably. <Yeah. laughs> I've been doing it for too long that you know they send letters to your house. They didn't call. Uh, I think it's. I think if I'm not mistaken, a margin call, they will, they have to send a letter to your house. But I think they send an email. There's probably pop ups and all that crap too. But I think they're required to send a letter to your house too. But I could be wrong. Um, that was nine, 10 years ago. Uh, things have changed. So it's in any days. Um, that's interesting. I thought it was just 90 days, period. You're, you're effed. Of course, it didn't really matter to me. I had no money I could put in there back then anyway. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I didn't know that. So, you're restricted for 90 days, or you put money in there, and then the 90 days is like null and void? Yeah. I didn't know that. That's kind of cool, actually. Should we have money laying around? Um, there you go. Late to the party. <laughs> uh, that's this coin term right there. Let's see here. Yeah, where is Matt? Where is Matt tonight? I guess we wore him out last night. <laughs> Let's see here. Lost truck of time. We need to do get another coffee. Yeah. Phuket. All right. Been there five times. All right. Um, did you go in through Singapore? Did you go in through Bangkok? How did you get there? Most people, I think... Um, I guess they go in from Singapore if they're coming from like the United States. That's cool. I've been to Singapore. I actually wouldn't mind hanging out in Singapore anyway, Malaysia for a while. Super clean place, anybody. <laughs> Don't bring any gum there either. Um, what? Oh, yeah. It's strict. Like it's they'll cane you. <laughs> for gum? Yeah. Yeah. It's a super clean place. Really cool. Honestly, I spent like a couple days in in bangkok those people are so nice i was walking and i was walking next to a guardrail or something like that and my hand rubbed against the guardrail and it just like slid it and i was bleeding and stuff and like this somebody like literally came out of nowhere and just like hand me a band-aid i was like how do they even know you know what i mean it's crazy it's nice people um friggin hot outside yeah you live in a sauna what do you expect I, I don't think I could live down in Houston. 
Brian H., it's like 20 seconds in Thailand. Good channel. It's like 20 seconds. What does that mean, Jerry? It says, I like. Must be a YouTube channel or a oh, TV thing. Oh, yeah. Um, thanks for that. I'll have to check that one out. I'm doing a lot of research on stuff like that. Um, I've been to Thailand. Um, I'll definitely go back. Um, yeah, I met a girl uh, when I was in Australia that was from Thailand, so I kept in touch with her. And then we, friend and I went to Thailand, say, hey, we're coming to Thailand. So she showed us all around. It's kind of cool to have a hookup there. Um, not a hookup like you think, folks. A hookup that knows Thai language and knows all the spots. And she took us around and, you know, it was like kind of like a chauffeur in a way. That's cool. So um, Phuket. I've never been to Phuket, so that's that's on the list. I want to go to uh, Pattaya as well. I think it's how you pronounce it. Pattaya. Uh, I probably said that one completely wrong, butchered it. <laughs> Let's see. Watch out for Ladyboy. I, lady I don't know if that's what that is, but I'm assuming it is. Uh, Ladyboys. Yeah, uh, definitely. Uh, Where? Where? Everywhere. Everywhere. Obviously. Obviously. But <laughs> Thailand. <laughs> no, 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 no. Here, you can tell. There's Adam's apples. There's just the general look normally what so normally what they do here and i'm not knocking any trans people or anything like that normally what they do is they compensate with a boatload of makeup and a shitload of freaking lipstick right and that's just a dead giveaway right adam's apple is too but over there you can't tell you cannot tell uh okay the starbucks i go to has an ac 757 there you go. Free Wi-Fi probably too. Okay, so what? Uh, when I was a kid, I thought the band... <laughs> Inksis? Inksis. Inksis. I thought it was I kick ass, but okay, so I Inksis. Um, That's in excess. In excess. <laughs> I would have probably said Isis, but that's just me. Um yeah, I know, Jerry. I'm just, you know, my brain. <laughs> my brain's just weird. Isis, uh, Inksis. She probably liked the Hanson, the Hanson brothers. Hanson boy. She listened to uh, New Kids on the Block, probably too. Probably. Um, you know what? She's not from that era, though. She's from a slightly different generation. Yeah, than we that's are. you're. Yeah, you're yeah. probably right. But she is also old school too, though. Old soulish. Right? A little bit. Baba is going to zero. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Palantir would go to zero before Baba does. So, mind bed, well, mind bed, no. What's another one I always say to go zero? Wish. Wish is going to zero before Baba is. Uh, before fire, probably hippies. I think your money or your life book was one of the verse. Yeah. Billy and I think that's the one I follow. I think they actually fired in the eighties. They had a they have a blog, right? And they're down in South America, if I'm not mistaken. Like they spent most of their time down in South America. And everybody that's fired, every it's interesting. Everybody that's fired, like 10, 20 years ago, they have way more money now than when they were fired. Yeah, that's saying something, folks. Don't be too. Don't be afraid. Set that number. Don't do the just one more year game like I did. Learn something from me. Um, the just one more year. Just one more year. Oh, Rajiv, welcome. Haven't seen you in a while, man. Hopefully you uh, recovered from your Mara or Riot or whatever it was. How do you decide how wide of a spread to choose when selling put spreads? Seems if you go wide, then you get used to more premium, but it uses more margin. If you make it less wide, oh, that's a good point. I use credit. I use credit spreads differently than you use them. I only care about reducing this, the actual buy-in power, not really the protection. So, the, so he's kind of making the case here. I think the general rule of thumb is is a third of the width, right? And that's hard to get. Yeah. 
Um, I just don't have a lot of experience with spreads. I only put them on to reduce the uh, the buying power. So I go 500 wide. I go 1,000 wide because normally I wouldn't put I wouldn't put one on anyway. I would just put a put down there, right? But my yeah. put's right where I want it anyway. So why not just reduce the buying power by buying a thousand wide or a hundred wide or a five hundred wide? That's me. Now, now that now, has just that has an asterisk, asterisk next to it because Dave's talking portfolio margin. It's Correct. different on portfolio margin when you're doing spreads. Um, standard portfolio doing a credit spread. I'm still not a fan of it um, because you really have to get if you want to get a third of the width of the spread, you really have to get close to the sun. And you're talking like 30 Delta or something like that. And, you know, it's 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 a little too. I don't want to manage it. You know what? I, it I mean, like you can't me, roll up, obviously, but it's I don't know. What, it, what it sounds like to me is. Most people, when they're doing credit spreads, in my opinion, it's almost a directional trade for them. They literally think the stock is going to go up and they want it to go up. They need it to go up, right? They can deal with a little bit of downside, but that's probably what the, the issue is. To me, that's not an issue. Like, I'm just going to put the put down there where I would have it anyway. Right. But, you know, yeah, I don't know. Because you, you can't, can't, you can't right? do it. You're, pretty, you're flying right next to the sun, right? Yeah, you can't do a spread and be safe on your short put. You can't. You have to. I mean, if you're going to do a, a, you know, five delta uh, sell put, there's no. You're not going to get anything to buy the next thing down, right? You're not. It's not. There's nothing there. You know. So, yeah. um, you know, you have to be up in the twenty, thirty delta, selling that put. And then you know you're just you're right there. That's to me. That's just a couple days, and you're you're in the money. And then you're having to manage and roll and all that stuff. But I also think you're also coming from the CSP world too, right? So it's a little bit of a you know partial mindset, I guess. Right? Both you and I really don't like spreads. The normal traditional way people use spreads doesn't make any sense, right? You don't make that much money. You have to go. You can't be aggressive. All right. I'm sorry. You can't be safe. Right. Right. So when you come from that mindset, um, it doesn't make any sense. From his it, mindset, like most people are coming from the mindset of they're they don't even they can't put a regular put on down there anyway. Right. So they need to do the spread. So that's, that's, and there's protection there, right? See, that's 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 what I'm saying. Is is it's funny because it's not funny, but it's just the observation is is that. They think we're being risky by putting on a a naked, right. you know, 10 delta, but we think they're being risky by putting on a 500 wide uh, credit spread at 30 delta, 20 delta, whatever it is. That no, feels like they're, they're putting like, like a five wide. Oh, yeah. But that, that to me, that's more risky. I agree. Because you're up, you know, toward toward the price and then you actually define your max loss yeah i know you can roll but it just still it's i don't know it feels more risky to me if something went against you you'd lose less money right but this the the trade-off is what we're doing is it takes a lot more down you know down move to even be attested at all let alone for you right like you're yeah you define the risk but it doesn't matter i have a way to get out of mine i can roll it down i can do whatever right i mean it's just so far down there, like Amazon, I mean, 2500 on Amazon or something, 2700 right? But yeah, yeah it definitely know. makes sense to for some accounts to be doing credit spreads, but uh, to to uh, a lot of people say it's less risky. I just don't feel that. I, I agree. Um, depends on how you're looking at it. If you're using it like me, it's not less risky, right? Right. So, but what we're, he's talking about here, use more, use more margin if you make less wide. Yeah, I think he's having he's having the same struggle that we've always had with him. I think is what it sounds like. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. It's 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 always an interesting conversation though, because there's the people that swear by him. This is all they do, right? And yeah. it's I don't know if it's just because they have a small account and that's the only reason they're doing it, or are they doing it for the protection with a uh, guaranteed loss? <laughs> uh, let's see, Puckett pronunciation. 
is appropriate for the city of what I have heard of. Thailand is high on my list of destinations. Friends in Bangkok. Hey, man, I'll tell you what. Make sure we stay in touch. And because uh, I'll be over there for a while, probably. And uh, I, I'm looking forward to actually meeting ex other expats and people that fired, especially, you know, especially, you know, other engineers that, you know, single. <laughs> they don't have to be single, but um, <laughs> other engineers just in general. Um, you know, I don't know. I think it's just cool. Uh, you know, Matt's a good example, too. If I can get Matt to freaking uh, commit. Let's see here. Chiang Mai was might still be in place for digital nomads. Chiang Mai. I don't know if I've ever been to Chiang Mai. Where's Chiang Mai, Jerry? Do you know that one? <laughs> Is that in California? You ever been out of the California, Jerry? I have been out of California quite a few times, but okay. uh, mostly mostly for business, not for pleasure. Chiang Mai. What the hell's Chiang Mai? Thailand. Oh, okay. Um, I was only there for like three days. So is it Chiang Mai or is it Chiang Ma? I've always heard people say Chiang Mai. It's probably not the correct way to pronounce it. Pattier is probably not correct either. How far is that from Bangkok? Let's see. Thailand, Laos. Wow. How do you get to Chiang Mai from Bangkok? That's a long ways away. Yeah. What do you, uh, what's the, what's the, uh, the allure? What's the allure to going to Chiang Mai versus going to Bangkok or Phuket or whatever? I think it's funny that I lost two subs since we've been doing this. <laughs> what's, what's going on with people? Why do they hate live streams so bad? Um, or they just don't like my, they don't like my humor, humor, possibly. Well, it probably makes sense um, to just unsub if you don't like my humor because it's just me. All right, what do we got here? We need to get to the bottom because it is going almost two hours, but man, we got a long way to go here, folks. China is really coming hard on tech companies, especially one the apps, app store. Eh. Yeah, I agree. It's a communist country, folks, although they kind of touch capitalism too but uh, they can do whatever they want over there um yeah i don't know uh see i did that mistake this week so there you go he makes mistakes too burned a 60 dollar bill could have took his wife out to denny's uh chinese stocks i stay away from no you don't you do anything all good anything <laughs> mind man a colony I hope not. <laughs> yeah. Uh, MindMed is not a good colony stock, in my opinion. Can't believe you're making that mistake. Hey, look, all good. Everybody is going to make that mistake. Everybody. It's just a matter of time. It's not if, it's when. And I've made the mistake a couple of times, and I'll still make it some point again in my future. How many times have you done it, Jerry? Um, at least twice that I know of. <laughs> and that's a less than a year? <laughs> less uh, than a year, yeah. At least twice. It might have been three, but I know for sure. Well, no, no, no. It's more than more than twice because I did it. <laughs> okay. I, I, I bought it, right? I bought this put, and I thought, holy crap, that thing filled immediately and for a good price. So I went back <laughs> bought another and I one. another one. <laughs> Oh man! Oh, well, I got a great price in this. Yeah. Well, there's a reason why I get a good price, folks. Because <laughs> he took it right oh, at the. Uh, you took it right at the bid. Oh, sorry, yeah, you took it right at the ask. Exactly. I was like, that filled immediately. Yes. Let me do that again. <laughs> oh man. Uh, so he basically double screwed himself because not yeah. only did he he bought it uh, at the price that they wanted. He did. He added another one, so got double screwed. Um, oh, I bought to open, but I was planning doing a PMCC, not realizing that I likely can't do it. Okay, so she already owns the leak. Then that's fine. 
shouldn't have really gone down in value. The problem that you might have run into is the spread on it. You're not going to be able to get order. out of it without losing 50 bucks. Yeah, hopefully you did a limit order and you got a little bit of patience with you. Yeah. I don't know what stock what stock was it, Jerry, you know? CCL. Oh, CCL. Okay, that's not too bad, but still, the spreads on leaps are crazy. And I guarantee you, there's no way that unless the stock went up that you would not lose money getting out of it in one or two days because of the spread alone. Uh, I make that mistake. She makes the same mistake. There you go. Crazy question. Anybody here invest in wine? No. I, I used to with uh, Altria. M.O. How does Altria do wine? They do wine, they do cannabis, they do tobacco. I didn't know that. They're Who's in invested in Kevin O'Leary's wine company? Anybody? Cigars, too. Cigars. Cigars. Very de funny, Dave. I do chase Juicy. She does. She's the king. Um, juicy premium syndrome. All right. I'm here. Just listening to Jerry's reassuring voice. Lure me a deep... <laughs> Restful state of mind. There you go. Put you to sleep. Mara, 10% a week selling strangles. Huh. Strangles, huh? There's a reason why it's 10% a week. <laughs> well, that's kind of debatable because it depends on how wide your strangle is, too. Right? I mean, I bet you I could put a Mara strangle on that pays me like 1% a week. But anyways, yeah. That doesn't really tell us much, but I don't know. I don't know if I'd touch that one. It's just one of those ones where I'm just, ooh, no. Tam, what's going on? How's your options trading going? Are you doing any options? See what premiums are juicy. It's called a minimum equity call flag on your account if you drop below 25K. I've never heard that before. Because I don't know if I've ever had a count drop below 25K. Is that specific to uh, equities or is it, you know, I mean, it even has equity in there. Um, is that, does it matter if it's options or equities? Direct flight from Qatar. I know Qatar very well. Back when all y'all were paying $4 per gallon, I was paying 88 cents a gallon in Qatar. Um, let's see here. Dave, how do you owe, not own owe IRS taxes throughout the year for all the dividends? I do. <laughs> I do owe taxes. I just don't pay it. Yeah, you don't have to pay them. Yeah, well, you do have to pay them. You just don't. I just choose not oh, to. Oh yeah, let me take that back. <laughs> yeah. You do have to pay them. You just don't have to pay them right away. You can. They say uh, there's a rule that you have. There's. They suggest that you do minimum quarterly tax payments, but it's a suggestion. You will get a penalty you for not doing it at the end of the on the next tax filing season. So it so. It's very confusing, too. Let me just say this. If you go to the IRS website and look that up, they make it seem like you're required to do this. Okay? Right. The thing is, when I sold that rental property, it was a big gain, right? I'm like, all right, let me do some quarterly taxes, right? But I spread it out over across three payments. My question is, is and this is where it's debatable, how do they even know when you've had the gain? They don't. Right? Right. So I mean, technically, they're going to know the gain on the house when that happened, right? But they don't know when all these dividends necessarily happened or anything like that. It's throughout the year. They're not going to calculate all those dates. I can tell you that right now. So what's to stop me from waiting till January to make that quarterly payment for all, well, for all the gains that I had back in the previous January, right? Like it's just – it's suggested. And it was like Jerry said, they, keep, they moved the goalpost a couple of times. So right now, I think it's 90%. You have to pay like 90% of the taxes owed. Um, and if you don't, then they're going to have, there's going to be a penalty there. Uh, for me, yes, I'm going to owe probably 30 grand, maybe 40 grand in taxes beyond what I've already paid from my job for all the gains I've had. I have money set aside, yes. 
But my argument is, is I can just keep this money, trade options the whole year long. And I'm going to make way more money than what the penalty is going to be. Right? It's my money. It's all Damn I can. And the other thing that's scary about it, if you ever made quarterly payments, it just goes into a black hole. Money goes out of your account. And yeah. you hope, you hope by next year when you file that they have a record of that. Yeah, exactly. A screenshot of all that shit because what it does is a tax software question. Okay, Tax Act, that was what I use. What well, TurboTax is another one. It asks you, did you make any quarterly payments during the year of tax year, blah, blah, blah. You say yes, and you say how much. They don't ask you what date you made it, as far as you I don't remember. Get a, you don't get a receipt when no. you do a quarterly tax payment. No. You don't get a receipt. Just, it's tied to your Social Security number, I believe. Um, it's kind of scary, honestly. Unless, I think I paid sixty grand in, in quarterly payments when I sold that house, and I was like, oh, God, I hope they have a record of this. You know, So it's scary. There you go. There's your answer. No, we all know you meant that kind of hookup. Yeah, so I'm not getting out of paying the taxes, Cody. <laughs> oh, man, I'm not a tax evader. I'm definitely not a tax supporter. I can tell you that right now. It's all theft. What is the appeal of Thailand? Never been. Is it the food, cost of living, the women? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that um, was the answer. It's really, it's really none of those. It's just, I mean, it's all of those, honestly, but it's, uh, I don't know. <laughs> it's just a, a great place to geo, geo arbitrage, along with the Philippines, along with many other countries, right? Mexico. It's not just Thailand. It's just any other country you can geo where it costs you $2,000 to live a month and you live like a king, Right. You can have a maid. You can have somebody make you food every single day for two thousand dollars a month. That's what it is, you know. They're nice people too. There you go. But uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, I know where you live, so <laughs> uh, I've only been to Hawaii once, and I just passed them through, but uh, on a deployment. So I really, I don't know the people there. I'm sure it's just as nice there too, right? Uh, the food's probably good. You know, I'm going to get some pig, you know. Give me some pig. <laughs> mm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, give me some luau pig. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm sure it's just nice, but i would tell you the difference in Hawaii and Thailand. Hawaii is going to cost you a boatload of money. That's the difference. I think if you do it in the Roth, it's, it's deferred until you pull the cash out. I don't know what he's talking about. He's talking mm -hmm. about probably payment taxes. Yeah. Uh, what he's talking about up here is I'm just in a taxable account. It doesn't matter. I got to pay taxes on it at the end of the year. So I'm up 30 grand. I'm in like a 35% bracket or something like that. Somewhere around there. Um, so I'm going to own a boatload of taxes. But uh, hopefully next year Next year will be my first year where it's not going to be a full year of employment. Uh, so taxes will come down. And then the year after that, taxes should be about the lowest they've ever been in my life. <laughs> well, no, no, I have to take that back. In my fire journey life, I guess is a better way to say it. Pound tears are going to zero. Guilty as charged. I like new, there she goes. She likes new kids on the black, <laughs> aren't they? New kids on the block and Hanson. James Palace, great live stream. Hey, pr appreciate that, James. Naked puts are definitely better than credit spreads. Well, you can do credit spreads, but imagine, okay, imagine if you're putting on a CSP. You have a portfolio margin, whatever. You have all the money in the world, and you say, okay, I'm going to put on a CSP on Amazon. There you go. Where would you put that CSP on? Would you put it down at 2700 There you go. If you are, why not put a credit spread on, right? And then uh, put it like down 500 wide. There you go. So I'm okay with using credit spreads to reduce buying power. But that'd be like 20 grand in buying power that thing would use up. Jerry, I'm way behind. Chiang Mai, China. 
Yeah. Chiang Mai is northern. Yeah, about, thir- about 13 minutes behind. Okay. We'll catch up. Chiang Mai is not in China. No, it's not. It's in Thailand. Northern Thailand. Um, Pattaya. It's a 45-minute drive from Bangkok. Yeah. Um, Phuket is It's quite a ways away, actually. It's like literally in Malaysia, almost in Malaysia slash Singapore. It's not that far from there. Um, it's like right on the fringe. Everybody knows what how to golf. It's on the fringe. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'd probably just fly. I'm not really a fan of flying. Like, honestly, flying scares me. I'm not scared of flying. But I'm scared of crashing and stuff like that. I've been on some, you know, <laughs> I've been on a flight where they lost cabin pressure. So that was kind of scary. But uh, it's, I don't know. I'm, I'm not, especially like Indonesia, right? They're like the, they have like one of the worst track records, you know? So it's scary to fly. I'd almost rather, you know, take a bus and even that's scary. But I don't know. I like to be in my own Crash. control when it comes to that. Crashing Crash. in a plane would kind of Crash. suck. Yeah. 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 Chiang Mai just got critical mass in terms of a lot of digital nomads where there is a there is at the same time they have a good internet, lots of coffee shops and work on okay. I'm gonna keep that one on the list. I'll check it out. How does IBKR handle losing put credit spreads? If stock goes below the sold put, then does it exercise? No. You have to do that on your own. Yeah, you you they're they're not gonna auto exercise anything except at expiration. Exactly, but it has to be in the money. Right. In this case here, your bot one wouldn't be in the wouldn't be in the money. Yeah. It's kind of like the PMCC. You have to you have to remedy that yourself. Yeah. You know, you get assigned the negative shares and then you gotta exercise the the leap to satisfy the negative shares so i'm assuming it's something kind of similar here um i think most people would be closing them out before anything like that happened or rolling it right right yeah wasn't ccl jerry oh i didn't want to say (laughs) she's not doing come on cletus (laughs) uh we i yeah i am I beat you up in your ten thousand dollar bed in my video too. Um, geez. What did you get into? What did you get into? Altres Saint Michelle, what's that? From buying a cigar company a while back, I think they own ten percent of Bud still. Yeah, I'm not the biggest fan of Altre, honestly, but they've they've survived. With 40 years plus of decline of cigarettes, can't deny that, All right? Rajiv, why leave it up to the broker? I agree. Close the position yourself, buy and close your short, then sell to close your long. I agree. With PMC, yeah, I already talked about that. You know that one, Jerry? St. Michelle, I know Copenhagen. I don't know St. Michelle. Yeah. I don't know St. Michelle either. I'm like a, I've never done a drug in my life, so I have no idea. I don't, <laughs> I'm like the most naive person. Um, cash and equity net value of account PDT rule. Okay. She go. I just actually watched a couple of their videos today. <laughs> Gas station encounters, folks. Uh, see, Good. whoa. Isn't that bad for PMCC? They don't exercise your long to cover. No, they don't. It's not hard. You just go in there and click on it. There you go. Exercise. Yeah, it's all it's all self service in I broke in, in interactive brokers. I don't know if any other brokers do anything special, but they should be all self service. I'd rather them not close it. Honestly, I want to be in control of that. Yeah. I don't know. That's how IBKR does it. I don't know if anybody else has done a PMCC in the other that can say that's how they do it or not. But for a fact, that's how they do it in IB. They'll show negative shares, 
negative one or two hundred shares, whatever, how many contracts you have. And then you have to go in there. If you want to satisfy those negative shares, you can buy them back. Right. Or you can exercise the long leaps. And that'll satisfy it. I think it satisfies it immediately, too. I'm not mistaken. I only do options my IV, I, uh, IRA. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My my tax documents are super long. Um, I'm glad they're, I'm so glad they're all electronic now. You just download the CSV file, import the CSV file. There you go. You mean, I mean, it's so easy nowadays because I used to input all those trades by hand. And unless you're doing mark to market, like it sucks. Mark to mark, it's easy. It's two numbers pretty much. Uh, let's see here. For the PMC season. Yeah, okay. He's just answering. Um, I trust Thumper. Let's see here. Since there was talk about Chiang Mai, is your guest living there? Are you going to? No, I don't know where she lives. I haven't talked to her in years. Um, going to look at explain. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know where. I. I didn't know how to get in hold of her anymore. I used to be on Facebook and that's how I was. And I closed that account in 2013. So I don't know how to get a hold of her anymore. Um, yeah, sorry, Carl. Let's see here. Basically, you are fine paying the penalty that, yes, exactly. Because you think you can earn more. Yes, that's exactly my point. The penalty is not that much. It's like a thousand bucks or something like that, I think. Um, sounds like a lot, I guess it is, but when you owe like, you know, 40 grand, a thousand dollars, not that bad. Okay. So I see with the PMCCs, the dates are different, a sort of makes sense. They don't decide for you. Yeah. No, it really depends what's in the money or not. That's what depends. So if you're, if you're short call or you're short put, is in the money, but your long puts not, then why would they exercise it? Depends on what's in the money. Ad expiry. For what it's worth, Thailand has one of the best countries I've been to and have been to over 27. It all depends on what you're looking for. I agree. I agree. You also got to take into consideration the visas and all that stuff, how friendly they are to uh, expats and Americans. It's not every country is a fan of American people. Um, i trying to think if there's any that I've been to that weren't, but Kuwait, like they loved us in Kuwait. Jeez. They treated us great in Kuwait. Uh, Qatar. There's a lot of third country nationals in Qatar, so kind of, I don't know if the Qatari people liked us, but the third country nationals had no problem with us. Uh, there's a lot of people from Nepal and Qatar. Uh, so let's see here. If you want to do an Amazon put credit spread also. Oh, okay. There you go. Yeah. Did you ever do one on that, Jerry? Yeah, I did. And, uh, it's, it's, to me, it's just, like I said, it's scary. Um, cause I think you I was like, yeah, I did it on Amazon. It's like, you know, what? 150, $200 away from. The share price and for an Amazon, that's like nothing, right? That is, it's like that's a one day move, folks. Yeah, that's nothing. And it's like, I'm so glad that it showed profit like from Friday to Monday that I was like, I'm out of this thing. <laughs> that's the issue with doing spreads with no portfolio margin, without a big account. I mean, he's he agrees that he would do it how I do it. Just like he's doing all the CSPs right now, he put the put right where he wants it, like looking at a chart or going super safe, like three percent probably in the money, and then putting the spread on. Yeah, the um, you know even though the, the 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 consensus is the credit spread is the safer play, I couldn't sleep. I'm like, ah, yeah. get this thing out of my <laughs> freaking portfolio, right? So I it agree. Is what it is. I agree. That's funny. Uh let's see here. What? I don't know, Carl. What you talking about here? <laughs> I now have to go my check my shorts. Your short positions are your actual shorts you're wearing. <laughs> um, more like oh, absolutely, I agree. But um, 
I agree that the statistics say you're more likely to die in a car crash, but at least I'm on freaking control. You know, and I mean, if a plane goes down, you're done. I mean, there's no, <laughs> you're done, period. In the crash, you have a likely of surviving. Okay, if long put doesn't expire in the money, then you lost it if he doesn't actually, no. The difference is, is there's going to be a partial loss there. It has to go in the money to lose the full amount, I think, right? If it's, the difference is, is between the width minus whatever premium you, you know, uh, received. So the width of the spread of us five wide minus your premium, and then it keeps dropping. You're going to be losing, 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 and the max loss is whatever uh, that long put is. That's the max loss, right? What right at there at the money. Do I have that right, Thumper? Pretty sure that's right. Crashing in a plane is like the world's longest and most scary roller coaster while nursing a bad hangover. Jeez. I don't want to do think know? about it. Wait, how do you know? <laughs> don't bring that up, Jerry. My mom used to say that Sprite from Jack in the Box used to taste like toilet water. I'm like, how do you know? <laughs> It's just what it tastes like. Um, yeah, ISIS index <laughs> hides. <laughs> Saint Michelle is a wine. I didn't know that. You know me. I buy a box wine. I'm cheap. Come on, two buck chuck. It'll get you drunk. Boone's Farm. Glenn Madavi or Madavi? I don't know what. What's Glenn McKenna? No, not Glenn McKenna. Glenn McKenna's expensive. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Robert Madavi. There you go. It's a Napa wine, I think. Cheap. I want to check out Chiang Mai. Why don't you meet me over there? We'll uh, we'll check out Chiang Mai. We'll check out Chiang Mai. We'll go. Yeah. Let's fire together. You can fire. You can fire at the same time. Bring a cat with you. Uh, Y'all, welcome here in Kuwait. Ah, uh, yeah. It's a great. It's a great country. It's hot. Don't give me. It's hot. 140 degrees, I think, when I was there. Somewhere around there. 130, 135. Yeah, it was hot. Jeez. Uh, let's see here. Should I learn? I stayed at a really nice hotel. It was during Ramadan, too. Man. Fresh. Jerry, tell me this. Have you ever had fresh strawberry juice? Fresh no. squeezed strawberry juice. Strawberry juice. Yes. Yum. Yeah. Mmm. That was tasty. Sure, the curl Ray. Oh, geez. Let me bring that up. This is not a political channel. Um, I got some people last week complaining that we were off topic or whatever. Look, we're talking about what's in here. You know, I try to stay on topic. I don't really try to touch stuff like this here, though. Go off in the weeds. And then all people freaking getting all mad at me. Okay. So what's Wes saying here? Zero, no zero cost stocks in my colony yet because I keep adding more as I collect more premiums. Closest is, isn't that the same thing that, oh, wait, that's what she's got into. It wasn't that, she wasn't talking about that group, Jerry. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. She parroted your trade, Wes. <laughs> she parroted your trade so when it doesn't work out she's going to blame you <laughs> oh man I hope that works out for you guys um, I wouldn't touch it with Jerry's poll uh, let's see here I don't know anything about that company though you know anything about that company Jerry? no I, I looked look at it, it and it's just nah, not for me yeah that'd be cool actually I wouldn't mind wow. it. Z06 in Kuwait? Yeah, he's probably a player. Not a player. He's, he, it's honestly, like Dubai, it's common over there. You know what I mean? Even in Qatar, it was common. Like those, they have really, I mean, they have money too, right? <laughs> so uh, Kuwait's a little bit different, but um, I'll tell you in Dubai, like pff, you buy anything they want over there. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm down. Yeah. Is it a C6? You had a C6 or C7? I think it's a C6, right? Okay. Uh, they just want your money to be in the Philippines. Very poor country. Be careful. Yeah, no, I agree. There's definitely some scams. 
You ever heard of the bullet scam, Jerry? The bullet scam? No. Yeah. Anybody here heard of the anybody in here heard of the bullet scam? It's where you're flying out of the airport and they stick bullets in your freaking luggage. <laughs> they scan it uh, like, oh, what? The, <laughs> good luck proving that's not your bullets. <laughs> yeah, that's a big thing you got to worry about. Uh, citizen, okay. Skip. What's that? Skip it. Skip it. All right. What about their Jeeves? Yeah. Agree yeah. with you guys about spreads. It's just about preferred. Yeah, I was thinking. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, Thumper. Think main lesson. Just close down your. Yeah. Something. If you're in Chiang Mai, go to PI. PI. PA. Great town. I'll screenshot it and save it. I love the food. I love Thai food too. Doesn't like me, but I like it. Um, <laughs> we have nice wine. Six. Oh yeah, I agree. I I don't buy. I mean, honestly, I bought an expensive bottle of uh, champagne. Hundred dollar expensive. <laughs> Hundred dollar bottle of champagne. It tastes just as good as the six dollar one. Um, ESG. Why do you try to get so political here, Cody? You trying to freaking get a bunch of people to unsub for me? Ugh. Look, ES, ESG invest ESG investing is a personal journey. Just like some people say that Kimberly Clark is a sin stock, or that Johnson and Johnson kills people. It's a personal journey. It's a personal uh, belief. I don't know. Every sin stock could be a sin stock to somebody. You know what I mean? It doesn't matter what stock. Jerry, name some random stock. McDonald's. They make people fat. Name another one. Um, Exxon Mobil. Oh, they ruin the economy. Or they ruin the, uh, the what do you call it, ecological system. They frack. They, I mean... Pipelines, uh, freaking BP spill. Sorry, Matt. Um, <laughs> let's see here. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's anything, you know, so. I plan on retire in Mexico. It wouldn't be, yeah, I, I actually think Mexico is not a bad place. I just don't know a lot about Mexico. Um, and honestly, I think the news here tries to make Mexico – they try to make them out like it's a really dangerous place because they don't want anybody to leave our country, right? That's the, what do you think they put a wall up? The walls so we don't leave. Um, it's not a bad country. As a matter of fact, it's kind of it's more free than we are, which is kind of interesting. There's more freedom down there, which is interesting. There's just there's just pockets of places that you don't want to go. Just kind of like here, you don't want to go to Detroit. You don't want to go to freaking Chicago. You don't really want to do. You know, it's the same thing. Sorry for the people from Chicago or Detroit. Sorry for the people from Detroit and Chicago. <laughs> Chicago is not all bad. Like there's some really nice places no, in Chicago. Uh, and and within those pockets are more pockets. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Just like Compton, right? There's there's I mean every place has that unless you know where they are, right? Like yes. In general, I don't think like cartels want to kill Americans in general. Like sometimes it's collateral, collateral damage because they're going to take a lot of heat for that if they do. So yeah, I don't know. There's, there's way more, there's people down there really nice and it's super cheap down there to live. Um, I don't speak the language and I'm not really a good, with I mean, I'm still learning English at this point, folks. I won't blame you. Well, yeah, it's okay. Um, check out CB media on YouTube for Thailand videos. I'll screenshot that one too. Um, dude, you want to come over to uh, Thailand and hang out? We'll get all these fire people, all these uh, expats. We'll just, you know, we'll have our own community. But honestly, you're doing yourself a disservice if you don't assimilate into wherever you're staying there. Try to learn the language. Just basic, right? I got to go to the bathroom because I'm going to need to know that one, right? I mean, all those basic things, you know, hi, please. You know, goodbye, thank you, right? Like, it's stupid if you go over there and you expect them to speak English. 
And I was talking to Jerry, you know, a lot of places, um, because the language of money is English, a lot of the, you know, the touristy areas, they do speak English because it's the language of money, right? So that's the reason why in the Philippines, they speak a lot of English there. Uh, so C7, oh shoot, nice. Z07 package, nice. I don't know you had a C7. Honestly, I think C7 is the last of the good one. The C8, eh, it's not a Corvette anymore. It's a, I mean, yeah, it's a nice looking car. And all that. It's just not a Corvette anymore. It's not even a stick. Jeez, cops put, there you go, right there, told you. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. I was just, yeah, read my mind. Good stream. Rest you. Yep, I, I heard the same thing. See, I get tired of job transfer in Kuwait. Not as well. Yeah, it's tough. It's tough to get those. Um, unless you know somebody, it's really hard to get those types of positions because it's normally people that know people. I tried for years to get a job over in the desert, and then I finally got one. But it took it took me knowing somebody. Uh, let's see here, cars in Dubai, not owned by locals, mostly renting. Okay, I didn't know that. Cool. Yeah, totally agree with you guys. Any stock can be a sin stock. Why well, I'm confused why ESG investing is a thing. Because that's where we're going these days. That's where the whole world, that's where, <laughs> that's where the culture's going. You got to start canceling the, cancel the stock because of that now, right? Oh, well, it has a low SG. I'm going to cancel this stock. That's where we're heading, folks. Exxon is heading that way, too. Yeah. they hire, I think they hired a bunch of, nah, I don't know. I shouldn't even have said that because I can't explain it. <laughs> you can always dig under the wall to escape or fly over it or swim around it. Or bust through it. Yeah, it's true. It only takes a... Only takes a freaking metal cutting saw. Totally serious. Meet you in Chiang Mai. There you go. Absolutely. That means you're gonna fire uh, in 2022, right? Uh, let's see here. I know several retirement community communities that are all American. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I I would probably venture to stay out of those areas. I don't mind a place that has expats. But why would I want to stay in a place like that where it's just yeah. <laughs> it's all American and the price is the same? Why? Get out of the cities. Detroit is a good place to be from. <laughs> Man. There's, I mean, geez, Flint. I mean, there's places in Detroit where you couldn't give a house away. You yeah, they're paying people. Need to take it. Yeah, they're paying people to take some houses there. Man, fifteen dollar houses and stuff. Like it's it's ghost town city. Ever since uh, our government here sent away manufacturing and stuff, man, they closed out. Like, and a lot of you know Ford and GM started pushing a lot of manufacturing down to Mexico and stuff. It is a ghost town in parts of Michigan. Um, I wonder. If, I've heard some came back though, right? They've opened some of those places back up. Manufacturing. Yeah. What do you think about Tesla as a sin stock? Uh, I agree. It's a sin stock. Huge one. It actually pollutes more. All that electricity you got to produce to uh, to make that and, and to drive those things around. It pollutes more than what we're doing now. No. And Every stock can, could be a sin stock. Yeah, you're probably using some slave labor in the batteries too. Uh, yeah, the Panasonic batteries, they're made over in China, probably, so it's slave <laughs> labor for sure. What's another stock? Stock? Any stock you can mention is a sin stock. It just, I'm trying to think of, like, the most, you know, nonsense stock out there, just to try to come up with an example, you know? Like, what's even in my portfolio, as an example here? Is Verizon a sin stock? Well... Yeah, because, I mean, they're giving you access to some crappy stuff on the Internet that you or think you're holding you up a phone to your head and you're, you know, sitting there with the head down. Can't you're antisocial. I mean, it, 
all depends on how you look at it. There you go. There, everything's a sin stock. Uh, they're coming in faster than I can get to them, Jerry. Agreed. Me and the hubby were thinking of moving to Mexico. All right. All right. Um, Rebecca Thompson's moving down there. There you go. There's a bunch of expats. David, what's going on? Grew up in Detroit. It's not all that bad. <laughs> oh, so Why is it laughing out loud pockets. on there? <laughs> yeah. Pockets within pockets. Pockets within pockets. I don't know what the hell Rebecca's just saying right here. Jack Tone. Yeah, I don't know. It's probably French. Guadalajara is not Mexico. Right? Guadalajara is not Mexico. Am I wrong, folks? Pretty sure that's their own country. It's an own country. Am I wrong? Please tell me I'm wrong. I think I know, I know where it's at. It's not that far from like uh it's not that far from Ecuador. No, sorry. It's not that far from Costa Rica. What's the other one that's right by there? It's a it's a city in Mexico. Oh shit. It's it was very close to the border. How do I get back here? Okay, here we go. Guadalajara? Really? There's way other places to live that are closer to the beach. Of course, Guadalajara, I think, is on the east coast. So that's not really a beach to me, in my opinion. Just like the Gulf. The Gulf Coast is not a real beach. I'm sorry. It's just not. Um, just like the, the west coast of Florida is not a real beach. A real beach is where there's waves, like real waves, okay? Pacific Coast, East Coast. I don't know. You ever been to, like, uh, um, let's see here, St. Pete? What's another one? Damn, I'm drawing a blank on the other place I go to. Uh, James knows what I'm talking about, but Pensacola, I mean, that's way up north, but I've been to Biloxi, Mississippi. That's not a beach. It's chocolate. It looks like looks like chocolate milk water. That's how nasty it is. <laughs> I, I mean, it's nasty, and I think the reason why it was so chalk milk, chalk milkety right there is because they put a, a reef out there, but it's not a beach, in my opinion. Yeah, it has sand, it has water, but it's like a Great Lake. Is that a beach? Is that a beach, Jerry? You know what? Maybe it's a beach to people that live in those areas because they've never been to a real beach. Yeah, I mean, what's the definition of a beach? It's just waterfront, right? Yeah. A beach to me is like Huntington Beach, Newport Beach, Laguna right. Beach. Like where there's waves and there's people. You're, I mean, that's, I don't know. That's just my, because I grew up on a beach. That's the reason why. But all right. Can I bring a North Face backpack on Sprint Airlines? Why couldn't you? You can't bring trekking poles on there. Those, you have to check those. Let's see. Let's, uh, drag Mateo along. Who's that? Matt. Why is his name Mateo? The probability in, of a in, flight in, on in Spirit in Line Mexico. is like 90%. <laughs> in, in Mexico, he'd be Mateo. Mateo. Miguel. Let's see here. Absolutely beautiful place, major airport, and one of the best medical schools. My parents were pushing me to go to school there. Where is he talking about? Guadalajara, I think. Guadalajara? Serious? Oh. Why do you why do Virgin Galactic Space Tour for 250k? That's actually cheap. I, I no, I wouldn't no. I definitely wouldn't be the first the person to do. I can tell you that right now. 250k, honestly, I thought was actually really cheap. That's actually doable for a lot of people, believe it or not. You gonna do it, Cody? MMM Sin Stocks. Triple M. <laughs> He's not saying Triple M here, but 3M. Uh, that's not what he's talking about, but I thought that is what he said. Oh, is 3M a sin stock? Yeah, see him. 3M's a, th a sin stock. Think about all like the chemicals and um, yeah, 
rubbing compounds and polishes and all you know what i mean like it, it's just a sin stock period right they produce aerosols um yeah so everything is a sin stock however you look at it dude is swedish look at the flag who's he talking about which maybe leave a flag on here no uh let's see here guadalajara central mexico okay yeah i just to me it's like because i don't see the uh, i know where it's yeah yeah where it's bad uh, i'm terrible sue me it's like central mexico in the middle maybe it won't Ch cherry cherry <laughs> hang on here god dang it oh mom maybe i'm thinking of another freaking country Let's see here. <laughs> oh, okay. I know which one I'm thinking of. I'm thinking of Guatemala. Uh, yeah, that's a different that's, country. Yes, that's what I was thinking of. Guatemala, not Guadalajara. You can see how I can make that mistake, folks. Uh, see here. I'm glad you won't blame me. Hey, she didn't say she wouldn't blame you, did she? I'm not sure why you can't sell calls. That's because she's in a retirement account. No, she's in a taxable account, but it does take it. It's not. Maybe she doesn't have the approval yet. You need approval for a higher options trade. Yeah, she doesn't have the approval yet. I think she's new to uh, options. So uh, why not retire in a boat? Yeah, man, nah, ain't going to happen to me. I'm scared to death of being seasick. Um, Jerry, you ever been a seasick? Um, yeah, my first time uh -oh. I went on a, a cruise ship, um, I had, uh, taken some Dramamine just as a preparation. <laughs> that made you sick? <laughs> and it made me freaking sick as hell. I had a headache and I was like, okay, I'm not taking that stuff no more. And the other ne next four days was fine. Oh, my only, like, I don't know if I can go on a boat in the ocean. I'm sorry. I went on one when I went and saw the Great Barrier Reef, and that was it for me. Like, the thing is, is people don't realize I have like a deathly afraid of vomit, right? With other people doing it, same thing. It's just, it affects me just the same. Like, I'm just as scared to watch them do it than it is for me, right? So, when I was going to the Great Barrier Reef, people were vomiting all over the place, right? I mean, they're all in bags and shit, but <laughs> it's like, you know, it's like maybe 50% uh, of the people were vomiting, you know? It's like, oh, man, when I got there, it was like, when you get to the Great Barrier Reef, it's like completely calm there. Flat water, everything. It's, it was so nice, you know? And we're going back, and I was like, I, I'm like, man, if I could walk back, I would, you know? <laughs> but uh, and uh, it's a big catamaran, too. We were hauling ass. Nobody got sick on the way back. It was crazy, and it was like major chopping on the way back. You know what I mean? And like, I told myself that's the last time I ever go in the ocean in a boat. <laughs> so, how big the ship was you on? Uh, I think those things are like three, four hundred feet, something like that. You're on like a freaking CCL type of ship. I was on a CCL ship, yeah. So you're just afraid of getting seasick? Yeah, I was worried. I was nervous about it. Because I'd never been on the ocean. So you took that, and that's what made you sick. And it gave me a headache like you wouldn't believe. That first oh day was actually God. horrible. I've heard yeah. that you don't, like, you don't even know you're on the ocean on one of those things. No, but I'm you don't. Sorry. I mean, it's, 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 you have to, you have to pay attention to realize you're on the ocean. As far as I'm concerned, folks, and I've said this before, it don't matter how big the freaking boat is, it's small in the ocean. Like, I, I've seen, like, rogue waves that are 10 stories tall hit a side of a boat like that, you know? And it's like, the boat's small. Yeah, forget it. Uh, maybe you were thinking of Gulf Shores. No, no it wasn't. Um, I was thinking of Clearwater is what I was thinking of. Sorry, Clearwater. I've been to Clearwater a couple of times. And Clearwater, um, it's not a real beach. Um, that side of the ocean is not a beach, in my opinion. I get it. Maybe your definition of beach is just sand and water. That's fine. That's fair. I'm not going to argue that. It's not a beach to me, though. A real beach. Um, you go to Miami and South Beach, that's a beach. 
Okay. Uh, and even honestly, parts in freaking Key West are not even a beach. Jeez. Okay. Uh, ready for earnings season. Oh, shoot, Jerry. I don't have to worry about that. I'm on, I'm in indexes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have anything. That's what actually is hard to put stuff on. Uh, when I was putting the longer data stuff on, I didn't really care. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually I'm actually close to that. I'm like, I should just put it on. Why not? It's freaking 45 days out. So I mean, granted, if you're in the positions that we were putting on, maybe not Jerry. Jerry puts on different stuff. But even my regular positions I was putting on, I didn't really even check if her name was around anymore. With the longer data TEs, DTEs, yeah. like I don't know if that's the way to go. I just never got burned. I was out of the stuff probably before most of them happened anyway. Uh, see here, you're mixing up coast with beach. Co that, that looks, it's still a beach. Beaches have warm, gentle, soothing water and sand. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm hoping it's just that my leap by needs to settle. Yeah, it could be. All right, we're getting down to the end, Jerry. We'll call it here. 235 minutes. Uh, Guatemala. Yeah, I agree. That's why uh, I thought that's what everybody was talking about. Guatemala. I heard bad things about it, too, as far as being dangerous and Venezuela's and like. So, um, yeah, Guadalajara. Sorry, right, folks, I got it mixed up. Uh, Dan gets it. Samsonite. Luggage? Yeah. I don't know. Luggage. Dave is afraid of vomit, of all things. Did you not watch my tick video or my my biggest fears of the Appalachian Trail? Didn't I talk about vomit in there? I think I did. I could thank my mom for that. Jeez. Uh, I spent two weeks on a boat in the Bering Sea. Very rough waves. You couldn't walk without bracing against the walls. Yeah, I watched um, The Deadliest Catch. I have to skip the first, like, you know, weeks. The first episode, a couple of first episodes, because they're all vomiting, like all the greenhorns. <laughs> <laughs> so, Yeah. DC is dangerous. I agree. DC is pretty bad. Parts of DC are pretty bad. Uh, see, good boys. Yeah. Let's call it here. We've been going for a long time. Um, we got to the bottom. All major cities in the U.S. are dangerous now. <laughs> That's kind of funny, actually. Uh, so futures are down. They're kind of flat. Whatever. It's not a big deal. Um, thanks a lot, for everybody joining. Uh, yeah, I did watch it. Probably missed. Yeah. Still laughing, huh? Um, yeah, rewatch it. Give me another view. <laughs> uh, sprained ankle. Yeah, it's a big problem for me. Yeah. All right. Hey, thanks a lot for everybody for joining. Uh, we had fun. Um, hope everybody makes money this week. Uh, hopefully, I can get the guests to come on next week, too. So I'll reach out to them, make sure they're good. And uh, anybody else wants to be a guest, like Rebecca wants to be a guest, let me know. We'll get you on. So until next time, we'll see you later.